Fifth game of the year for the Aggies, but only their second here at Kyle Field. They opened at home on September 12th with a win over Tulsa. And today, with perfect conditions, you could not ask for anything better for college football this time of the year. 77 degrees, just a very slight win, which really shouldn't affect much, we don't think, out of the east. And uh, it should remain just as bright and sunny as it is right now. Jerry Venatulius warming up and ready to get us underway momentarily. The Aggies have won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. So the Red Raiders will go on the attack to begin today's rendition of this series, which is led, as you can see, by A&M. But in conference games, since Tech joined the league, they lead 16-15 with a tie. Two wins in a row for the Aggies. It was very close here two years ago. They held on against a late Raider surge and won by only four. The last win here at Kyle Field for the Raiders, 1984, in a big way, 30-12. If you know anything about Aggie football, you know those folks will not sit down all afternoon. 4 0, number five in the country, looking at 12 0, they think. And this may be as tough a test, Dave, as they'll likely face until perhaps their trip to Texas to end the regular season. Absolutely, Dave. And I think that if I was Texas Tech, I would want the ball first on offense. And the same thing is true on the Texas A&M side. They love to start off on defense. Vanatulius with the wind at his back down to the one yard line. Tracy Saul, the great return man from Idaho, Texas, up the right sideline and spilled at about the 32 yard line. A return of 31, so Robert Hall goes to work. The fine junior from Dallas Carter, who is the conference total offense leader right now, 256 yards per game, a 51% passer, five touchdowns, and two interceptions. And our Nations Bank starting lineup for the Red Raiders featuring the nation's leading receiver in yards per game, Lloyd Hill, the junior from Odessa Permian. He's also second in the nation with seven and a half catches per game. The Raiders start from their 32 first and 10 up the middle and big room for Bam Morris and a first down to the 45. Steve Soleri on the tackle of Morris. The blockers up front featuring Charlie Biggers, their three-year starter who draws the tough assignment of Sam Adams, the left defensive end for the Aggies. 14-yard burst for Morris on the first play. Daryl Mitchell, the motion man. And again, they try Morris up the middle. And this time, he's got to cut back to maybe salvage a yard. And Marcus Buckley made the first hit. Speaking of Buckley, let's look at the Aggie Nation's Bank starting defensive unit. Adams, the number one recruit in Texas in 1991. They're still looking for more consistency out of him, but a world of talent. Buckley, likewise, all the talent in the world, a senior from Fort Worth, Eastern Hills, a Buckus nominee this year. Derek Frazier says, I'm one of the three best quarterbacks in college football. He may be. To the air for the first time. And it is incomplete on one hop intended for Lloyd Hill. Big third down play coming up here. And that is the play. I watched Lloyd Hill run that play, that little in pattern. That is the play that A&M has got to take away. Because Lloyd Hill uses that body so well, and Robert Hall always finds them. Look at the rushing yards at home against Baylor last week. 76 yards. In this conference, he is really the Randall Cunningham of the league in terms of being a dual threat. And with protection, the ball batted down by Eric England. Dave, that's one of the moves that A&M made this week, moving Lance Teichelman into the middle and Eric England out to the tackle spot. They felt England could rush better from the outside. The results were he was right in the quarterback's face, got his hands up, knocked the ball down. We've got the top two punters in the conference. Robert King second at 41.3 per kick, and he'll kick to Derek Frazier, and this one is gorgeous. Nose down spiral to the seventh. And Frazier manages only the 13. 
The kick traveled 48 yards off the toe of King, and Jeff Granger takes over, hoping, as we have pointed out, that he solved those technical problems that have that percentage down at a miserable 42%. Greg Hill, one of the top freshman running backs uh, in the history of college football last year. His first two games much worse than his last two. John Ellisor returns to the starting lineup at right guard this week after rehabbing from a sprained knee. Our Nations Bank Aggie starting offensive unit as they go from their 13. And they start Greg Shorp, the tight end, at the fullback spot in the eye, and a blown play, which has Granger keeping and spinning out of bounds for no game. A little cross-up that time as the Aggies now look at second and ten. On the defensive side for the Raiders, watch Hoffman. He was terrific in controlling and really shutting down Robert Strait in the inside running game of Baylor last week. Quincy White is their tackling leader. 32 stops coming into this week. Tracy Saul is now tied for seventh in the history of college football with 22 career interceptions. Out of the one back this time. And the double tight end set. And at first it looked like a nice huge hole off right tackle for Greg Hill. Then it closed in a hurry. Quincy White got there and it'll bring up third and about five. And that's what linebackers are supposed to do. That hole opens up real quick. The running back sees it. He's right there. You see the hole. Now look in the left of your screen. There's White comes along slides along makes a big tackle. So third and we'll call it six now for the Aggies. Doug Carter is on the field. He has finally returned after missing a few weeks with a sprained ankle at fullback. To the air was the idea, but Sean Jackson got there for the sack. Dave, and what Jackson did was just collapse the pocket. He really didn't beat his man right off the line. He's going against Jason Matthews. He just came and just crushed him back. Watch this. He's number 98 right there in front of me. He just, just pushes him right back into the quarterback. Late escape. You can see Matthews is still blocking against him. Jackson with his team leading fourth sack of the year and the leading putter in the conference and one of the best in the nation on a record-setting pace so far, David Davis. And he lays into this one. Saul backpedals to his 22. And a return of 10 for Tracy Saul. 61 yards off the foot of Davis. Each team has had it once and gone nowhere with 12-15 remaining. We are scoring. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting new videotape. This is the professional instructional video that gets results. See how this group of youngsters added an amazing six miles per hour to their arm strength while vastly improving their running speed and defensive skills in just a few weeks of work. Baseball World's revolutionary new video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same defensive drills used by Baseball World's back-to-back 1990-91 AAU National Championship teams. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best offensive drill video ever produced. San Diego Padres Major League Superstar Fred McGriff agrees. I'm so impressed with the instructional videos by Coach Amansky that I've given them my full endorsement. When you watch them, you'll know why. Baseball World's defensive drill video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels and improves coaches' practice organization. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-352-2121. Call now and we'll ship today. The 1992 Houston Astros salute our promotional English radio and Hispanic radio sponsors for getting into the game with us this past season. Our sponsors are a part of our team, and together we look forward to new opportunities in 93. We'll see you at the ballpark next April. Houston Astros out of sight. Get into the game, all right. Spike Dykes in his sixth year, 32-28-1 for Tech, and R.C. Slocum in his fourth year as the head man at A&M, 31-9-1.
Raiders from their 32 send Bruce Hill in motion and give it again to Bam Morris. And Eric England is there to bury Bam at the 35, a pickup of about three. The Raider attack so far, Dave, very conservative, trying to establish Byron Morris first, coming off his career week. Well, if they can get Morris to do that little slide just like he did there and see that hole backside, they can be very successful with the run. You don't think of him at 6'1", 235 as being that jitterbug. Runner, though. Same thing here. The cutback will get him close to the 40, and he meets Patrick Bates. He enters the Bates Motel. Big 6'4", 225-pound junior safety, who transferred last year from UCLA. And they are still cramming people into Kyle Field. They have just this moment turned away those disappointed would-be attendees. They could only get 70,000 in, and they may have it already. Well, that, does that mean it's the first 70,000 in to get in? But there's a crowd here today. Morris with the pitch. Will not get it, I don't think. Sam Adams from left defensive end. On the stop of Bam Morris. And Ray Com pleased to welcome our viewers tuning in on Prime Network, the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks. Looking at another putting situation for Texas Tech. King with that 45 yarder into the win. Lost up another nice one. Which Frazier will allow to bounce sideways. Now a bit of a Raider hop to the 16. 43 yards this time for King. Feeling one another out so far, Dave. And with 10-29 remaining in a scoreless first quarter, we're back at Kyle Field after this. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. When is the weak dollar good for business? Good? I don't know. The world of finance and investing can be pretty confusing, unless you call for this. Street Journal's Video Guide to Money and Markets. It explains the markets in clear, simple and brings them to life. This exclusive 30-minute video is free when you call for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just $37, over 20% off the newsstand price. Subscribe to the Journal and get a daily view of the whole world of business and how it affects you. Information you know you should know. Call now and you'll be ready next time someone asks you, are munis always a safe investment? I'm not sure. Call toll-free 800-592-1222 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-592-1222. ACC and SEC wars on the tough turf. Charlie Ward leads top five FSU against North Carolina or Arkansas and top ten Tennessee in the SEC. Live Saturday on HAC. Texas A&M takes over at their 16, trying to get their number seven ranked in the conference offense on track. It was three and out, first time they had it. They go from the split backs on first and 10, and on the draw play, major running room to the 27 for Doug Carter. Welcome back to the senior fullback from Dallas. After rehabbing his ankle problem, White and Wiley on the tackle as we check the Dr. Pepper roundup for the first time. Florida State ran back the opening kick to make it 7-0. Miami with 10 straight on top of the Orange Bowl. NC State on top of the second quarter at Atlanta. And Boston College, after three straight shutouts, finally scored on this week in Wisconsin, surprising Ohio State in the second quarter. Carter picked up the first down. Ryan Matthews in motion. And again, they slip it inside to Carter. He was a step away from going all the way. John Pitts reached out and made the ankle tackle on Carter. Arkansas in a world of hurt so far. Scoreless uh, this week against Georgia. Virginia early on top of the Demon Deacons. 
A&M using that off week to get some people healthy again. Ellis Horn Carter on the offensive side, and also Brian Mitchell, who is coming off two broken feet since last spring. He is available today, finally. Second and five, draw play. Greg Hill gets outside in the first down. 14 for Hill. The tackle by Sean Jackson. David, what a compliment those two backs do. The last play, Greg Hill blocked. This play, it's Doug Carter. Watch 32. Bam, he kicks the linebacker inside. That allows Hill to get outside. The play before that, it was Hill who was blocking for Carter on that 10-yard run. His first two games this year, 61 and a half yards per game, but his last two, 114 and a half. Looking more and more like Greg Hill time. Flip inside. This is Rodney Thomas from the fullback spot to midfield for Hill's backup, who lined up at fullback that time and was run down by White. Boy, you, you can't go wrong if oh, you're no. Bob Toledo and you decide, do I give it to Hill this time or do I give it to Thomas this time? Well, they're two similar style running backs, or I should say similar weights and heights, but a different style. The Greg Hill is that dark style, the slasher, whereas Rodney Thomas is the bull style. He runs over people. This time, short. The tight end lines up at pullback. Hill, the setback, right up the middle, should have another first. Well, they are just ramming it right yep. at the Red Raider defense, not well, establishing anything through the air so far. Well, it's the offensive line, and it's good vision by the back to see the slice. You the hole, I should say. You saw that time Stephen Gaines got double team and took himself out of the play. He needs to be a little bit stronger in there, hold his position. First and 10 at the Raider 43. And Thomas with one man to beat, run down at the six yard line. Seven yards for the sophomore from Groveton, Texas, and Bart Thomas saved six. Coach will tell you vision. Watch how quickly Thomas breaks back to the weak side. It's against the flow. It's not where the play is designed, but he saw a huge gap. He broke it. He took it, made a nice spin there, and he's down inside the six-yard line. Doug Carter at fullback. Hill back in at tailback on first and goal. And it is Hill to the two. Quincy White again very active at inside linebacker to start uh, this first quarter. Another tackle. Well, White has to step on this, step up on this play, and he does a good job. Sees the hole, steps up, stays square. Good job bringing him down. He replaced Matt Wingo, and from the looks of things, uh, they've not missed a beat at that position this year. Aggies now to the two, second in goal. And again, they call on Hill. Touchdown. Rushing touchdown of 1992 has the Aggies on top and Venetulius out of the hold of Davis to make it 7 0. Venetulius, 9 for 11 on PATs this year. Dave, we talked about the style of Hill being the darter, but this time he just puts his head down. Watch this. Bam! Down goes the head, stretch across the goal line, touchdown. First blood goes to the Aggies, 7-17 in the first quarter at Kyle Field. July 1992, Oldsmobile goes further than any other car company to redefine quality. Further than the lab, further than the test track, the Oldsmobile Achieva went 100,000 miles against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in a real-world test. Independent test results prove Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. 
Achiever, quality redefined. From the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. The word is out, it's gum out. Today, car owners are learning to improve engine performance. It takes gum out fuel system cleaners. Gum out's tough ingredients help eliminate hard starts, hesitations, and stalls. And there's Pennzoil quality in every product, which is why so many people know they can trust gum out. Gum out, solutions to engine problems from the people at Pennzoil. Gum out extra fuel injector cleaner is available at Kmart. Fast Track Thursday. Review the top motorsports action from IndyCar and NASCAR. Lay it on the line with the World Grand Prix Tour in AMA Road Racing. Plus the best in highlights from German touring cars to off-road with hot action in the SCCA and USAC. Plus over 30 straight weeks of great guests in action on This Week in NASCAR. Get on the Fast Track Thursdays on HSE. Aggies are ready for a good start. They have trailed at halftime in three of their first four games this year, but Greg Hill has them up by a seven to nothing count as Venetulius will kick. The three man uh, receiving four with Saul standing, as you can see, one yard deep in the end zone. Jamie Gibbs and Donald Marshall flanking Saul. Very high. And down. To the four yard line and this is Marshall fastest man on the roster but he only makes the 18. Good kick coverage that time Greg Hill as we said has been a different man his last two games compared to his first two R.C. Slocum says he's going to get even better. I think with the option last year the threat of Bucky running the ball created more opportunities for Greg. I think uh, when we get our passing game uh, a little further along. Uh, Greg Hill will look like Greg Hill. I, I'm very pleased with his work in practice. He's worked extremely hard and he's given us great effort in the game. Uh, I think he'll end up this season and the season though will have had another outstanding year. Paul intended that time for Daryl Mitchell way behind him deflected by Jason Atkinson. Dave what R.C. Slocum was talking about getting a passing game going opening up the offense is that a lot of teams have been cheating up. They've, uh, Rangers had a lot of problem throwing the football so they've been cheating up eight men up into that box what they call a tackle to tackle box and it's shut down the running game. They haven't needed anything in the way of passing so far the Aggies and Tech likewise trying to get established on the ground first pick up to the 23 maybe the 24 that time for uh, Bam Morris. At a and scoring drive all on the ground eight plays at 84 yards. They've only tried to pass once and that ended in a Sean Jackson sack on the first Aggie series. So what we thought we would saw today we would see today is Ranger trying to get established first and then that opening things up for Hill and so far it's just been the exact opposite. Paul audibleizing on third and five. And that one intended for Donald Marshall who lost his footing as he made the outside cut in front of Aaron Glenn. Marshall had this football. He stumbles on the out pattern. He has enough distance for the first down. Does a good job on concentrating on the ball. Tries to pull it in. But as you said Dave he had stumbled so he's trying to come back up. So Robert King will punt for the third time in this first quarter with 623 still to go. The Aggies play return all the way. A little lower this time. And Frazier stopped in his tracks at the 42 yard line. This one goes 34 yards for King. King out of little Ira Ann, Texas. David Davis from Loop, Texas. And they are the top two in punting so far in Southwest Conference play. Davis is on a school record pace by better than one yard per kick. So Spike Dice looking for his offense which has been far and away the best in the conference so far to establish itself the way Grangers has for A&M so far. From the eye with Carter and Hill. Greg Hill heads outside and nears midfield where 
He meets Tracy Saul. Do you expect Tech to go to an eight-man front since all the damage has been on the ground so I far? Do. I do. I expect them to have those linebackers and the D-backs creep up into the box. But I've really been amazed at, you know, Doug Carter just coming back. Had the injury, was, was out, but his blocking has been outstanding. He just got a great block on that play. Carter, the sixth-year senior. He's had more than a few injury problems during his career at College Station. Rodney Thomas checks in in the offset eye. Matthews the motion man. Second and a long two. Granger on the waggle delivers complete first down to Thomas out of the backfield. Well, if you're Texas A&M, you're taking a big sigh of relief because Jeff Granger just came out and threw a strike to the flat to Rodney Thomas. This is an out pattern, just enough to get that first down yardage. Look where the ball is placed. Great ball placement. Nice spiral in there. The ball was thrown tight. That's got to give a little bit more confidence to Jeff Granger. From his baseball, he knows the most important pitch is strike one, which he just threw on the football field today. First pass complete for Granger with nine minutes gone. Thomas. Big chunk, six, seven, eight, and a clip on the ground. Yeah, they're controlling him on the line of scrimmage. The Tech players have got to shed those blocks and move in there. We talk about the tackle box. It's from tackle to tackle. You see it here, Tech has two, four, six people in it. A lot of teams are stacking seven and eight. When you have a running back like a Rodney Thomas or a Greg Hill, you've got to play backside pursuit. That's why eight men clogs that up. Big start and just three tries so far for Thomas. Replaced by Hill. Look at that hole off left tackle. Greg Hill inside the 10. He matches his number, biting off 27 yards. And he punished the guy that brought him down, Tracy Saul. Everybody talks about tight ends receiving. Greg Shorp gets an outstanding block on the top. That's what opened up this hole. I'll tell you this, Greg Hill knows what to do with that football when he gets down there. Not for Tracy Saul, he goes all the way in. Boy, did Saul get the worst of that? First and goal, Aggies, eight-yard line, already leading seven to nothing. And Rodney Thomas squeezes inside the five before he's pulled back by Mike Lissio. The one, one difference that Tech is starting to make, they just make, made it on that play, is they're bringing those linebackers up and bringing them through, trying to create a little havoc in the backfield. We have to see if White and Brady Field can get that penetration up in the middle and stop that run back, that, that backside run. Boy, that offensive line, Wesley, Harrison, Dowson, Ellisor, and Matthews. As dominant as you could be in the first quarter. From the five, second and goal. Thomas in front of Hill in the eye. Give us to Hill. Met for maybe one. Bart Thomas, the sophomore strong safety from White Deer, Texas, on the stop. And you get the feeling as you look at the, the changes on defense. Texas, Texas Tech is saying right now, hey, you're going you're gonna to have to prove to us that you can pass. Now we're going to come up. That time Thomas came right up on the line. You see him there, number 20, came up from his strong safety position right up on the line and made that tackle. Well, Thomas is where number 20, Bart for uh, Tech, and Rodney, who comes out now for AM, replaced by Doug Carter. On third and goal. Ranger with a look, and that's incomplete intended for Carter. The pressure came on the blitz by Lissio. And that bring up fourth and goal. That's, that's the defensive play of the day so far for Tech. It certainly is. Lissio is all the way outside, 91. Watch this. Fight through a block. Right there, fight through another block. Now get up in the quarterback and disrupt the pass. That's an outstanding play. His dad would kind of like that one. Mm -hmm. Tony. He used to block for the Cowboys. So on fourth and goal, Benetulius to attempt a 21-yard field goal. He's 6-7 and seven with a long of 44 this year. And no problem on this one. 21-yard field goal. 3.32 in the first quarter as they fire the cannon with a 10-0 lead. But that, that doesn't look too bad for Tech, who had to be thinking... 
what do we do to touchdowns down until the Lissio play exactly and they they came out and they made some different changes on defense and it resulted in holding them inside the 10 yard line for that field goal that's a big boost for the defense they've run down the field on them twice all of a sudden you make the changes the changes start to work it's good coaching the players get confidence all of a sudden you start to rise a little bit this telecast a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without the express prior written consent of Raycom is forbidden. Mike Dyke says, by far, last week's 36-17 win over Baylor league game since we won 5-6 to close out last year. They've had games where the offense was down and vice versa and so far today they're both down well what they need to do on this series is come out get good field position on this return and then get some offensive continuity there they can also make those changes on offense they've run the ball well inside they have not been able to run wide look for Bam Mars to come up the middle Julius will drive Saul three yards deep, and that is deep enough to accept the touchback. Maybe the finest kicker in the Southwest Conference, Terry Venatulius. From Deer Park, Texas, setting up Texas Tech first and 10 from their own 20. The latest scoring drive, also eight plays, and this one goes 54 yards. The big one was the 37-yarder by Rodney Thomas. And Texas Tech has been in three plays in a row, three, three series, I should say, three plays and out. They need a couple first downs. They need some yardage. They need to take a little bit of the pressure off their defense. So Robert Hall and company back to work. Lloyd Hill and Daryl Mitchell both wide left. Offset eye on first and ten. Bruce Hill went in motion. Hall on the waggle. Finds Hill for the first time today and a first down at the 33 yard line. Robert Hall will kill you more with what he does with the football other than passing. That time it's a little waggle where he comes out almost on a naked reverse. Comes out there and the defense is fooled. He's got his receiver. He's got the option whether to run or to pass. He finds Hill downfield for the first down. That is 31 catches this year so far for Hill. He already, boy, if he was to end his season today, he'd have good numbers. Bam Morris off right tackle. Spun back by Sam Adams. And R.C. Slocum says if he can get some consistency, he'll be what everybody thought he would be. Well, that was a matchup right there. Sam Adams, 6'4", 282, against Bam Morris, 6'1", 235. You want to watch a meeting? Right here. There's a bam and a bam. Good form by uh, Adams getting low, getting underneath him. That was a collision. This meeting last year, we saw Sam Adams KO Jamie Gill and bring on the Robert Hall era quarterback for Tech. Second and eight, all alone is Mitchell and out of bounds at the 41-yard line. First catch for a guy who has been better than anticipated. Junior from Miami, Florida with his 17th grab of the year. Ohio State, Wisconsin, very surprisingly close, and Georgia on top now by 10 at Arkansas. The former Arkansas head coach, Ken Hatfield, still ranked at 1 and 2. That shows some respect. Only below 500 team in the top 25. Third and 2 for Robert Hall. On the roll, chase, dropped by Buckley. Sack number five, tackle for a loss number seven in the senior year of Marcus Buckley. Talk about the complete player. Good defensive players sometimes get knocked down. Look at this, down, right back up, springs back up, gets back in, gets the sack. That is a good football player. You can do that. Aggies almost get the block that time by Ray Mickens. Fair catch dropped by Frazier. They may rule him down. At the 28-yard line, it is Aggie ball. 35 yards for Robert King that time, and a sigh of relief for Derek Frazier that time. 10 to nothing, AM. They get it back with 2:06 to play 
in the first quarter. Well, now is the time to get good seats to the Southwest Conference postseason classic. The tournament again is at Reunion Arena in Dallas, March 12th through the 14th. Call the conference ticket hotline at 1-800-800-SWC8 Monday through Friday to reserve your seats to Classic 18. We'll talk with Tony Baroni, the head basketball coach at AM, coming up at halftime. Out of the eye, Greg Hill this time stacked up for a pickup of only two to the 30. Stephen Gaines got there first. That's what Gaines wants to do. He wants to play along that line. Excellent play along the line, slid square to the line, made the tackle for no, well, for about a two yard gain. But they stopped him a little bit short that time. Gaines, sophomore from Electra, Texas, goes 300 pounds on a 6 3 print. Shorp again is the fullback, this time in the eye on second and seven. And that's play action. Granger, a magician with the ball fake, and it is way behind Brian Mitchell and almost intercepted at midfield by Anthony Wiley. And we pointed it out in his freshman year last year. How many times have you seen a guy this polished with his ball handling skill? Well, watch the concentration that he has. All week long, he worked on keeping that elbow low. Don't allow the elbow to go above the shoulder. Good concentration. Look at the elbow. Just perfect shoulder level. That's what he wants. I know the pass was not complete, but he has to be happy that the mechanics were there. Well, most of the mechanical problems have resulted in low throws, which that one was not. It was just behind him. And bring up third down. is down as Carter drops it circling out of the backfield. They are mystified at Doug Carter's pass catching problems this year. He had a bunch of drops in the opener against Stanford. And Doyle Jackson says holding Aggies. Well this is the one you declined to bring up fourth down. Doyle Jackson's officiating crew includes Voss, Slaughter, Rogers, Pfeiffer, Nettig and Weeks. This week. The foul was holding by the offense, which is declined. Fourth down. Here comes David Davis to kick it away to Saul. And really, Texas Tech should get their best field position. Barring another one of those 61 yard punts, they should get good field position out at the 30 35 yard line. First one went 62 for Davis, who has upped his average by nearly six yards per kick this year. Looking like they'll play for the block, which they don't get. Saul pretty much all alone at his 20. Bill turns it into about a four or five yard turn out to the 24 on a 49 yard kick by Davis. Total offense leaders coming in. Number one, Texas Tech at 411 per game. Number seven at 321 and a half per game, Texas A&M. And you flip flop it. When you look at the Aggie defense against the Raider offense, Aggie defense number one, Raider defense number seven in the league. Woo! Paul, so far through the air, is only two of six for 19 yards as he takes over with 103 in the first quarter. And on the draw play, Morris to the 30. Pickup of about five, the tackle by Larry Jackson. Back up inside linebacker out of Rockdale, Texas, and Notre Dame. On top of Bill Walsh and Stanford early. Florida State with a tying field goal at the Orange Bowl, still first half. Dave, I keep on getting the feeling that Texas Tech has got to get something going on offense. Can't rely on their defense every time, even though their defense has stopped them twice in a row now. They need to get something started. Need to get across midfield. Need to at least get a field goal try. Morris way back at his 26 this time. England and Tackleman. Who flip-flop jobs this week. Tackleman moved from right end to nose guard, and England moved the other way. This offensive line is a good offensive line, but they don't get the movement here on the back side. See the penetration right there. Tackleman 58, 92 England. They get good penetration. Also, to be honest, Bam Morris decided he wanted to cut back on that play. He thought he saw something backside. There was nothing there. End of the first quarter at Kyle Field, just about at capacity this afternoon, and most folks are happy in College Station.
No one has money to burn, especially not today. Right after it was a year, the defroster thing went on it. The car was very good for the first 40 or 50,000 miles, and since then, I've, I've really had a lot of trouble. That's where Consumer Reports comes in. It can save you hundreds or thousands of dollars on stereo systems, microwave ovens, or minivans. Hi, I'm Bob Knoll, head of auto testing for Consumer Reports, the magazine that works for you. We can show you how you could save $2,000 or more on car insurance, how you could save $3,000 next time you buy a new car. It's one of the very few objective sources of information you can get. Everybody needs an, an edge. Call now for your trial issue of Consumer Reports. If you like it, you'll get 12 more issues, including the 1993 buying guide, all for just $22. Or write cancel on the bill, return it, and owe nothing. You'll also get the 1992 buying guide free with your paid subscription. So call for your trial issue now. Call 1-800-522-5333. Westway is easy where you gotta be And if you wanna buy a car, come see Joe Green Green is my name, my job is selling cars I'll sell any car, no matter who you are We have Fords and Zuzus and Subarus too So save a bus, my friend, we we'll please you Let's stick to basics, like this 92 Rodeo for only $12,995 Bubba Westway Zuzus Airport Freeway at O'Connor near Texas Stadium Last year's meeting in Lubbock, the Aggies led 17 to nothing at the end of the first quarter and 24 zip at half, so a little bit better for Tech as they look at third and eight, opening quarter number two. And Hall chased and dropped again at the 19 by Tackleman. The junior out of Austin Westwood, now two and a half sacks in 1992. A long time on that pass play developing. No one was open. Hall had to take the ball back there. Tackleman came all the way around. They had a stun up front where Adams came down inside. Tackleman came around, got the penetration and the sack. The latest kick by King. Fair catch, Frazier, 40-yard line. Good field position for Granger. And the offense after a kick of 40 yards. And our stats at the end of the first quarter will show you the imbalance which has been brought about by the dominance on the ground by a 135 rushing yards. They get only nine through the air and still have about a 100 yard total offense edge. Raiders with only two first downs on the day so far. Matthews wide right. Mitchell is wide left. Connor and Hill in the backfield and on the draw Greg Hill with that cut back mode. Only a couple this time. Stephen Gaines on the tackle. And that's what you have to do. Stephen Gaines did a good job that time of making Hill cut back at the line. If you allow him just to burst through, they're into the secondary, and that's where he uses that blazing speed. But if you make him turn, when he gets to the line of scrimmage, you make him turn and go around the block, you've got time for your linebackers to react. Out goes Carter, in comes Bradley Thomas. Give up a little blocking when they go Thomas and Hill together in the backfield, but who are you going to concentrate on if you're a defense? That's the problem. Mitchell went in motion play action. Granger on the waggle, looking deep. Fires caught, 42 yard line. First down grab by Short, the tight end, 16 yards. That's the connection that bailed them out in that pigskin game in Anaheim. A different pass, though, but same, almost the same play. Roll to the left. That's where Granger, he's a left-handed quarterback, set up. Look at that throw. That elbow's down. Obviously, offensive coordinator Bob Toledo's going to be happy with those type of things. And, and he didn't expect it to solve itself in one day. He expected that at, at some point Granger might revert to form, but he's thrown so seldom today that we haven't seen the problem so far. First and 10, Rodney Thomas spinning at the 40-yard line where he's gang tackled. About half the defense there led by Chris Ory. Sophomore from West Orange Scott. 
Well, when you're a quarterback and you're so used to success and all of a sudden things aren't going well, he's bouncing the ball five yards in front of his receivers, all of a sudden you're just, you almost start questioning yourself. And even as great an athlete as Granger is, I know he's questioned himself. Now they find a mechanical flaw, they change it. All of a sudden you say, hey, that's the whole problem. Now I can go back to success. And he's having it so far. Cliff Rose, the sophomore fullback out of college station, checks in on second and eight. And shifts into the high formation. Hill for no gain. Are the Raiders finally solving the ground attack? Well, they are because Stephen Gaines is playing through the line. He's a big man. He slid through the line that time, stayed square in the pot, right in the hole, and made the big tackle. You can watch him here, 77. Watch the penetration. He's on right at the top of your screen. Stay square. When he cuts back, there he is. Right there, drags him down. They need a big game from him because Harry Dias is out with a knee problem this week. 300 pound Stephen Gaines. And a timeout call with 11 minutes and 52 seconds to go. In the first half, 10 to nothing, Aggies over the Red Raiders before 70,000 or so at Kyle Peters. Now, by special arrangement with the world's leading record companies, we proudly present 50 great moments of opera. And here they are. Most beloved voices, Luciano Pavarotti. Classico Domingo. Opera's most touching arias, Un Bel D from Madame Butterfly. Call or send now. Thrilling choruses. Habanera from Carmen. Renata Tibaldi. Here is an extraordinary collection of what many believe to be the ultimate performances of opera's great moments. Look at this incredible list of stars. All your favorites are here. You get the spectacular Maria Callas. Call or send now. Listen to these beautiful arias. Here is all the great music, great drama, and great singing in a special collector's treasury like you've never seen before. Call or send 1998 for four records or three long play cassettes, 2998 for three long play CDs to 50 great moments in opera. Order today. Today's Southwest Conference flashback is John David Crow, Texas A&M's only Heisman Trophy winner. Crow also was the only Heisman winner coached by Bear Bryant. That class of 1957 is uh, assembled here today. They're honoring the 35-year grads. That Heisman Trophy stands on the bottom floor of the athletic office complex and Greg Hill touches it every time he walks by it hoping that a little of that will rub off by the time he leaves here. Every time I see John David I remind him he indoctrinated me into the NFL. He ran over me. <laughs> and you still remember. It is third and eight and Granger will look and fire it deep. This one wobbles and is incomplete intended for Brian Mitchell. The coverage one on one was there from Donnie Brooks and that was not the best delivery we've seen from Granger today. No that was a hurry up throw and Donnie Brooks had Donnie Brooks had the interception. One of the changes that they've made is short tight end in the backfield comes up good block out here trying to scoot him around the outside. Now he's not in the pass pattern now he raises his hand says hey throw it to me. But downfield Donnie Brooks had an interception. Brian Mitchell kept that ball from being intercepted. Davis will try to angle this one somewhere inside the 10. And it was touched at the 8. Finally blown dead just outside the 10. Not a whole lot in the way of field position today for Tech. Just the way Slocum hopes it'll be. Boston College jumping on top of West Virginia. Surprisingly close there in the second quarter. Dave, I'm still looking for that Hill and Hall connection. 
I think if they get if they get Lloyd Hill on the outside, put him on one on one on one of those cornerbacks, he's got the ability to beat him outside. Aggie quarterbacks don't mind the idea of going one on one against Lloyd Hill. That is death to most corners. Glenn and Frazier are not most corners. Ball on the road to Hill, and he lost it as he was hit at the 20. No catch. And that's an interesting play because if Hill had, if he had control of the football, the ground can cause a fumble. Let's see if he had control when he gets out here. Let's see the ball yet? I don't know. I, I thought he had control of that football. I beg to differ. Okay, well, go ahead. Two sacks <laughs> so far for Hall. Moore is 33. Hill only one for 13. And the Aggies are more than holding their own on the ground with 139 rushing yards. Granger just two for six, still not the high percentage. Second and 10, Bam Morris finds some cutback room and picks up about five or six. Ray Mickens, backup cornerback on the tackle. When you hit Morris, you know it. 6'1, 235 with about 4'5 speed. I love the story how Morris got his nickname Bam. Said his dad looked out the window one day and he had this kid, and everybody thinks of uh, the Flintstones. They said, no, that's not it. Said he had this kid and he was hit, beating him up. He was going, Bam, Bam, Bam. 90 pound, <laughs> five year old doing that. Virtual in motion, third down. Hold down again. And tackleman. Well, the best move that Texas A&M may have made is moving Tackleman into the middle because he's getting good penetration. They've got three sacks already today. Buckley has one. Tackleman has been in on the other two. And the Raiders still with only a pair of first downs. With the win, nice job by King getting this one down to the 37 for Frazier. Wall set up on the right side, down hard at the 48-yard line. The kick went 52, and the return went 16. And what a half so far for Lance Tackle. It certainly is. Anytime you're a nose tackle and you get that kind of penetration, you're really doing a great job, and that's what Tackleman's doing. Coming around the center, slipping the center, getting penetration into the backfield, and he's got two sacks. Two of the three, I should say. Great field position. Inside Tech territory, 47-yard line. Red Raider defense starting, it would appear, to solve some of the running problems. They need more of the same. Down 10 to nothing, 10-10. First half. Red Hill will be close for a first. Bart Thomas in the secondary made the tackle. Big chunk off left tackle. When I played football, I hated those backs that came in there and had the vision to make that either inside or outside cut. Because you can't play off. You're a man, and that's what's happening to Tech right now. They're locking up good with them. They're getting the movement, but Hill is making that seam. He's picking, just making the right choice each time. Boy, Hill 137 yards on the ground last year in Lubbock and well on his way to even bettering that total so far today. We got nine, second of the short one. And Granger wants time. What did he see that time? I don't know. I thought for sure that's that's almost a waste down. You don't even worry about it, even if you have the wrong play called. But Granger called the timeout, burned one there. And they burned two. They're down to only one with 9.24 to play. Order number two, 10-0, Texas A&M. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. The way to not win in tennis is to think too much about your opponent. Because in tennis, you don't just play the opponent. You've got to play the ball. It's how you play the ball that determines whether your shot is in or out. Whether the point is won or lost. Play the ball better than your opponent, and you'll play winning tennis. Now, 
You can play the ball and win with this double offer from Tennis Magazine. You'll receive a free half-hour video by Tennis Magazine instruction editor Vic Braden, plus a full year, 12 issues of Tennis Magazine. Call this number now and change the way you play tennis. What a combination. The How to Play Winning Tennis with Vic Braden video, plus the magazine that brings more instruction to more tennis players than any other. Call 800-592-1222 for a full year of Tennis Magazine, plus this free video, just $13.77. Call 800-592-1222 now. The Big 8. We've got it covered. All the angles. All the strategy. First and 10. Ten. Fourth and inches. The Big 8 Gridiron Report. Thursday at 3 on HSE. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe in College Station after their second time out of the first half. AM looking at second down and a little less than one. And when you look at this situation, when I said it was a waste down, that's the one where the quarterback can fake it in there, a little play action, trying to hold the backers and go deep. Ryan Matthews in motion as they give it to Greg Hill for the first down at the 35 yard line. But when it's when the running game's working, you just keep on picking up those first downs. We want to uh, alert you today that due to atmospheric disturbances called sunspots, we may experience some breakup in the transmission of today's game. It's a temporary condition. Please bear with us. It is Dave Rose's fault, and he is doing what he can <laughs> to correct such condition. You're, you're blocking, blocking out, out the you're sun. You're blocking it out again. You want me to block out the sun? No, I want you not to. Oh, okay. See, you don't get it. That's the problem. First and 10, up the middle. First man is Thomas, backs his way inside the 30 and picks up about seven. And the difference between that being stopped for about a one yard gain and picking up seven yards was a hand tackle there. Hoffman had him, tried to drag him down, but with that great leg strength, just keep those feet moving. You pick up that first down, break clean. Underway, as you saw in Waco, with SMU suffering. Major suspensions this week for a book reselling situation. It results in 18 suspensions with a 3 and 1 record in jeopardy. Second and four. And it is Thomas knocked backward after he perhaps picked up a yard or two. Lizio made the first contact. There's a real, and he touched on it. A moment ago, real contrast in styles between Hill and Thomas. Physically, they're almost carbon copies, but how they get it done is very different. It certainly is. Rodney Thomas is one of those people. He's only 5'11", 200. Well, he's 5'11", 203 pounds, but he thinks he's about 235. He tries to run over you. Hill is one of those darters. He comes up in the line, he's got those quick feet, looks for the seam, and finds the opening. Thomas in an up front. Straight ahead uh, style, reminiscent of someone like Eric Dickerson, who, like Thomas, came out of a very small high school program. Hill ran into the back of Lissio. Lissio will help out on this tackle with his back turned to the ball and uh, force a fourth and two. Well, what they're doing, though, that time Tech again gambled a little bit, brought those backers up in the line, and when Hill got the ball, he had to run parallel to the line. Lissio was trying to hold his spot. It was a trap on him. He held it well. They brought him up short, fourth down and about two yards. They may go for it. They have not moved the kicker onto the field. Were they to try the field goal, it would be into a breeze which has picked up since the game began, and it would be 45 yards. On fourth and two, on the ground. Greg Hill's second effort will be very, very close. Davey had to make the 25-yard line. The ball is on the 25-yard line. He should have been stopped for about a three or four-yard loss because he got hit in the backfield. Tech played this well, very well. They strung it down the line. They got the up back. Now watch. They make him go out wide. And Bart Thomas comes up there, and you see that he almost goes down. Now he doesn't touch his knee down. That's the secret. Watch the knee. When he stumbles here, you don't see the knee go down. A lot of backs would go down. He uses the hand. He stretches. The decision is whether the ball's on the line. First down, it looks like. He got himself an extra four yards on that guy-given yeah. agility. Well, wow. once, 
A lot of backs would go down in that situation. You saw how spread out his legs were. They were sliding out from underneath him. He puts that hand down as almost like a tripod and picks up the first and down. A normal human being is looking at uh, six to eight months rehab after <laughs> being in a similar position. Greg Hill, obviously not a normal human being. The Aggie drives continues at 6.38 and counting first half. Hill again spins out of harm's way and turns what might have been a three-yard loss into a two-yard pickup before the tackle by Steve Hoffman. And that's not a normal human ability he just displayed there. That's 89 yards so far on the ground. Sophomore out of Dallas Carter. Carter has produced a whole bunch of talent we're seeing in this game. Robert Hall, for instance, uh, the Tech quarterback. Hill, the most prominent former Carter Cowboy on the Aggie side. And there are several. Short moves up to a slot right. And Hill again and stood up, knocked back by Hoffman. That's how he did it in controlling Robert Strait. And John Henry for Baylor last week in his seven tackle performance. That's an outstanding play by Hoffman. He's over the middle, breaks through. Now watch how parallel he stands right there. Boom, he's right in the hole, square in the hole. Doesn't let Hill go outside or inside, rips him down. That's one you want the coach to play back and forth on Monday when you watch the film. <laughs> Neither team has converted yet on third down. Long odds on this one, meeting 11. On the blitz, they force another Granger incompletion. Ripping right up the middle was Anthony Armour that time, and Granger was nowhere close. This was a good blitz. It was disguised. It was a it was a slow blitz, slow developing in that the linebackers not up on the line. When the hole opens, you'll see Armour just come flying up through there and force the errant pass. Anthony Armour, Dallas Carter, true freshman, first team All State. Just 190 pounds. This will be a 43-yard effort by Venetian. And again, it looks to be more than the five-yard breeze we began today with. That one will fall short and wide right. So the Aggies turned away with 5-0-1 in the first half, still with their 10-0 lead on Texas Tech. I would recommend to the average car owner that they change their oil every 3,000 miles. The cheapest insurance that you will ever buy for the life of your car is to keep your engine oil changed. We choose Pennzoil. Pennzoil makes a difference in the way the engine performs. You can't afford it. You can't afford to have the wrong product in your engine. Pennzoil, performance, protection, quality. Now you can live your dream of being a big league ball player at the Texas Rangers Fantasy Camp. At Rangers Fantasy Camp, you'll work on infield and outfield drills, take batting practice, play games every day, and receive instruction from former major league players. Plus, you'll wear your very own Rangers uniform with your name and favorite number on the back. For information on the Rangers Fantasy Camp and a week of baseball you'll never forget, call 817-273-5222. The game breaking play or the hit of a lifetime. The madness of football in the fall is memories in the making. Northeast Louisiana and McNeese Day live Saturday night at 7 on HSE. The Southwest serves up the hardest hits in Texas. Don't miss the sets and spikes as the league's top squads battle above the net. Southwest Conference Volleyball. Take it. Rice and Houston, Wednesday night at 7.30 on HSE. Getting down late second quarter, 5.01 to play, and Tech still trying to mount any kind of a scoring threat. They take over at their own 26-yard line this time. Their average drive on the last three possessions starting at their own 18, a and from their own 40. So by that standard, Tech a little bit better off as they begin this one first and 10. Ball with a play call at the line on first down. 
And uh, the catch made at the 34 by Mitchell in front of Aaron Glenn. And that's a gain of about seven or eight. That was a real positive pass by Robert Hall. Call an audible on the line. Nothing boosts your spirits more than when you make a check on the line, you come out there, you run the play well, it's executed well, and you complete it for a first down. Well, for about a nine yard loss, oh, gain, I should say. Tony Miller checks in. In a four wide out look, they keep it on the ground for Bam Morris, who squeezes to the 36, and it'll be close for a first. They run out of a passing set that time. And, and Bob Davey, the Aggie defensive coordinator, talked yesterday about how the, the tech offense presents you two sets of problems. Number one, a lot of different looks. Number two, a very fast pace. They come up to the line, they go with very short counts usually. They try and get as many snaps in any game as, as you can possibly squeeze in. There's Davey. That's Bob Davey calling the defensive signal, and you're right. Coaches look at tempo of the game. Quarterback comes up, goes through his cage, and snaps the ball. But with Peck, it's a fast snap. Got a foot needed on third down. And a lot more than that is there for Morris. 42-yard line first down. Gates on the hit. Dave, one of the great stories we talked about earlier is Marcus Buckley. This play here, he's number nine. Watch, he's going to get pinned inside. He's looking for that inside gap. He bounces it outside. That's first down. That is one of the, Buckley is one of the great stories. They had a tremendous write-up about him, about his family situation with his dad, how his father passed away. It was really an emotional moment. Caught by Mitchell, but not a whole lot there. Ankle tackle was immediately applied by Derek Frazier. Ball uh, at this point has not even looked deep. No, and that's surprising because he, he's got such an outstanding wide receiver in Hill. He's got, on the other side, he's got Mitchell. He's got some good deep threats. He's probably a little bit concerned about the timing back there, but he needs to go deep every once in a while just to loosen up this defense. Four wides again. Morris pulled and the only setback is Bruce Hill. Over the middle to Mitchell at midfield. And it'll be third and two. Aaron Glenn on the tackle, but again, it's short stuff. Well, it had to be that time. They had a blitz coming up the middle. He read the blitz very well and found Mitchell over the middle. Third down and about two. They really need to keep this drive alive. Their defense has been on the field a lot. Their defense has responded. It's held Texas A&M. They need to get something going on offense. What better way to end the half than cutting the lead to three? That's what they've got in mind. And Morris should have the first as he pushes the pile up to the Aggie 47. Steve Solari was on top of the pile. I talked yesterday with Ted Umbehagen, the offensive line coach, and he said, there ain't going to be nothing fancy tomorrow. We're going to come out. We're going to play power football. We need to control the offensive line. We need to come off there with that surge. That was a good, uh, a good example of it. They just played power football. Behind the 290-pound senior tackle, Bigger. Wobbled by Hall, who appeared to fall on it at the line. And the Raiders will burn their first timeout with two minutes and 22 seconds in the first half. Not too far from halftime when we look at this week's candidates for the Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team. We visit with Aggie basketball coach Tony Baroni, and we'll meet today's classroom champions and hear from both school bands. All this plus first half highlights and statistics at halftime. Offensive coordinator Dick Winder in conversation with Hall. Well, they've got the wind at their back, so they've got almost a sure field goal try. They're sitting on second down and 12 yards now. They need to get probably inside the 30 to get a good shot at at least a field goal. And 27 yards is their longest drive of the game. That, that tells the whole story right there. By the way, to emphasize, we will show the Aggie band at halftime. The, the folks who look for them and missed them at the pigskin classic did so for a good reason yeah, they, they weren't there they weren't there i know i did that pigskin game and i, I remarked i was telling phil stone the uh fellow who did play by play i said wait do you see this band they have an outstanding <laughs> band he said where are they i said i don't see them i said but i promise you'll hear them they weren't there already on second and 11. 
sideline route again, caught at the 42. And it's Mitchell again. Lloyd Hill covered up extremely well for the most part in this first half, and Mitchell becomes his favorite target now. Clock rolling, 205, underway at Rice Stadium between the Longhorns and the Owls. Third and five. Good protection. This time he goes deep for Marshall, and Marshall has it at the 16. First down. Twenty six yards to the Grand Prairie speedster Donald Marshall and Marshall was well covered on this play. He was just not going to be denied. He came down the sideline and he just decided that was his football. Those few fans who weren't standing are now. All ready to go for six. And that one's complete as Lloyd Hill had to go to the deck to bring it in at the five. These receivers for Texas Tech catch that low ball better than a lot of receivers. That was a tough pass. Have the defensive back come in front of you and you catch it about a foot off the ground. He snared it and it's first and goal with that much time left. Awfully hard to call audibles in this situation there in the hurry up offense. He uses the hand signal to tell them what play they're going to run. To the end zone and incomplete. Marshall was the short man. Hill was not anywhere in that picture. They went to Miller, I'm guessing. It, it was really right between Marshall and number 88. Well, speaking Tony of Miller. Marshall, let's take a look at that catch down here on the bottom of your screen. Donald Marshall's well covered. He's out of your picture now. He just comes back in there. That's Mickens covering him. And Marshall's just not going to be denied on that catch. And that is a sweet catch for guys who had drop problems, drop touchdowns against Oklahoma and Oregon this year. That sets him up in scoring range. On the ground and to the one-yard line is Bam Morris at a minute 16 in the half. Bates making the tackle. And the Raiders will call their second timeout. And what you want to do in this situation is not panic. A minute 16 doesn't sound like a long time, but it is a long time. They're going to have they're going to be inside the two yard line. You've got a power fullback that nobody stops. I go right back to him. You got two downs. You got at least one down to pick it up. If you don't pick it up, you can go with the field goal try. You can also see Robert Hall fake that ball to him and roll out and have that run pass option where he runs the receiver out in the out in the flat. A lot of options for Tech here. When you have uh, a guy like Lloyd Hill with so little room to operate in the end zone against such great cover people, that's all the more reason to see what you can do on the ground. Here's his great catch to set up first and goal. That is an outstanding catch. When you have the defender flash in front of you and you concentrate on that football, that is a big time catch. Who does the advantage go to? Great receivers or great cover people when you got so little room to work with? Oh, there's a big advantage to the defensive team on this situation because they have someone standing back there. It's called the back of the end zone about 10 yards off, and they don't have to cover past that. on the ground and he didn't get it. First man there was Sam Adams. This is so close. When Marsh gets it now. He's going to make the decision turn up, get behind him. He gets a little touch there. But look, right at that goal line, they get three, four of those maroon shirts. Bring them down. Now then, if you're Spike Dyke, do you go all this way and gamble for seven? Do you settle for the sure three? Well, I was I was really I was in honor of, of Spike Dykes in the Oregon getting game when he went for the tie. He didn't go for the tie with a field goal. He went for the touchdown. But in this situation, I think you've got to come away with some points. If you kick this field goal and it's a little chip shot, you're only down by a touchdown. If not, your offense has just moved the ball and you go in on a down note into the end into the halftime locker room. Well, what about this idea? Go to the line, looking like you're going to go for it. See if you can draw them off sides. I mean, it's, it's a goal well, to go. 
but if you if you have to march back five, you help yourself in terms of the angle. Yes, you do, because the angle is going to be very sharp. It's on the right hash mark, and the soccer style kicker is going to kick that ball. The, uh, the goalposts get a lot different on that angle when he looks up at him. And here comes Robert Hall. This is a surprise. He may be doing exactly what you're saying. Extra blocker in the backfield is checked in. Big 235-pound Byron Miles, along with Bruce Hill and Bam Morris in the full house on fourth and goal. Bruce Hill with a man to beat. Got there. Touchdown. What a play by Spike Dykes Red Raiders. Wow. What a play by Robert Hall down the line. I want to tell you that option play got stopped. Within about three yards, when he made the turn, Robert Hall just pulled it out. Just an outstanding pitch. That's what made the play run. That's what made it score. I guarantee there were 70,000 people and 11 wearing maroon who thought they had stopped Van Morris a yard short of the goal. Then they look up, well, what's this 41 guy doing? And it's 10 to 6 all of a sudden. With the extra point by John Davis, up and good. 10-7 game with 51 seconds in the half. First of all, what a great call. Oh, it is. Second of all, riverboat gambler this well, year or what? He's a riverboat gambler. You're right. He plays to win. He came down here. He said, we came to win. Watch Robert Hall on the play. Fake in here. Now, right there, he has to make the pitch. He pitches it outside. Now you've got Morris out here. Use that big arm. Patrick Bates made the attempt to stop Hill, but uh, at, at, at the ankle level, you won't bring down yeah. Bruce Hill. Well, they had faked Byron Morris up in the middle, and all of a sudden, 41, like you say, come running out there. And he pitched it to him. He just pitched it to him well. Just great because when he caught the ball, he had a lot of time before he got up to the defensive corner. What a call by Spike Dice. He plays the win. Trimble Tech High School in Fort Worth produced junior Bruce Hill, who culminates the 13th play, 74-yard scoring drive. The only sustained drive this half by Texas Tech has uh, made this place fall almost dead silent. If, if you can ever feel like you're ahead in a game, which you're really not at halftime, those guys have got to feel like that. They certainly do. Their defense has kept them in this football game in the first half. Their defense has really risen to the occasion today. They had two long drives, but they stopped them three or four times when they had scoring opportunities. Ray Mickens up top and Billy Mitchell bottom of the screen. As Davis drives this one very deep, four yards back. In fact, touch back from their 20 to go with 51 seconds. With a flag down, and we, I don't think, have seen more than, what, one, maybe two flags today. Very cleanly executed first half by both teams. This is going to be a flag where it's going to be some type of a personal foul because the ball was not run back. The flag's thrown out at about the 15-yard line. Unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. Net result is uh, nothing. Serves as a warning, and it's still first and ten from the 20. And that's time enough if, if you're Slocum to think about seeing what's there on offense. At least maybe thinking about regaining some of the momentum that, that is totally gone. Texas Tech's way by, by that touchdown. Listen to this crowd. There is no crowd noise. One of the musts that we felt that Texas Tech had to take the crowd out of the game. Right now, the crowd's just trying to get themselves back together. First man through is Carter, who muscles for about five. Adam has only one timeout left and not using it here. And evidently, they will be happy with the three-point halftime lead. 
you know, the interesting play about the thing about that touchdown play is that there was never a doubt because when Hall came out, he snapped the ball on fast count. They weren't trying to draw him off sides. They just said, hey, we're going to go and we're going to score. And he made that great adjustment down the line to pitch the ball. Couple off left tackle this time for Hill on what will apparently be the final play of the first half. What an interesting first half it has become. AM as dominant as you could be in the first quarter and a half, and then Tech got it, drilled seven four yards, and with a little razzle dazzle scored to make it a three point game at halftime. Oh. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Oldsmobile redefines quality. Here's proof. Call 1-800-THE-TEST to get independent test results from a 100,000-mile real-world test of the new Oldsmobile Achieva against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. Learn how Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. You'll even get a free video documenting the test. Achieva, quality redefined from the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Think Tyson is the greatest heavy that ever lived? Watch Joe Lewis. Like Sugar Ray Leonard? Wait till you see Sugar Ray Robinson. See them. Own them. The greatest fights of the century. Yours to own. Yours to keep. Walcott and Lewis. Zale and Graziano. Dempsey and Tunney. Carnera and Bear. And many, many more. Rare dynamic fight footage preserved on state-of-the-art videotape. You can be there for the fantastic fights of the century. Call now to own them. Call now for the fantastic fights of the century on modern videotape for only $19.95. Call now. Now, two volumes of the fantastic fights of the century, yours for just $19.95. Two state-of-the-art videotapes with the fights you've only heard about, yours for just $19.95. But you must call now to take advantage of this special television offer. You must call now. Call now to order this two-volume set for only $19.95. These fantastic fights make the perfect gift for faster delivery. Please have your credit card ready. Call 1-800-522-5333. That's 1-800-522-5333. Full speed ahead this October on HSE. Tune in for Tough Turf Saturdays and catch perennial college powers from coast to coast along with some high-impact collisions in the SWC and the Southland Conference. We'll also set them up and knock them down with SWC Women's Volleyball. And shift gears with Fast Track Thursdays. Fall sports are full speed ahead this October on HSE. Back here in College Station, a three-point difference at halftime. Now let's go down to the field and enjoy the going band from Raiderland. with more of our halftime show after these messages. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Hey. 
pages of National Geographic magazine. For only $21 a year, all the wonders of our world unfold before you. You'll enjoy award-winning photographs that explore the remarkable diversity of our world. Whether you're trekking across Africa or racing to adventure, National Geographic takes you far beyond ordinary reporting. Join the Society and you'll also receive up to six valuable reference maps. National Geographic promises you the best and nothing less. Call 1-800-592-1222. Charge it if you like or send $21.3650 in Canada to National Geographic or call 1-800-592-1222. ACC and SEC wars on the tough turf. Charlie Ward leads top five FSU against North Carolina. Or Arkansas and top ten Tennessee in the SEC. Live Saturday. At Texas A&M University, we're proud of our tradition of preparing Aggies for a lifetime of success. Looking back, I feel that A&M as a whole taught me how to go into the community and help other people as well as be a leader on my job. When you leave school, you have two things. You have your education, which relates directly to your, your job, and then you have personal skills, which allow you to deal with people. I had an advantage coming out of Texas A&M. There's no doubt. Preparing top students for the workforce. At Texas A&M, it's our greatest tradition. Back again at Kyle Field at halftime where the Aggies lead 10 to 7 over Texas Tech. And uh, in a few weeks, uh, this man will be in full swing, and that's Tony Baroni, head basketball coach at AM, fresh from the Baroni Bash. What exactly is that? Well, we, we started a golf outing here uh, y yesterday, and uh, we, we have a, a golf outing during the afternoon. We had about 30 foursomes. Uh, played out in Pebble Creek here, which is a new golf course in town. My invitation got lost in the mail of it. Well, you, you had to have a, a handicap other than your swing to play in the outing. And uh, we uh, then had an, uh, a dinner that night, and uh, Al McGuire was our guest speaker. And he was phenomenal. And uh, it was a good way to tip off our basketball season. Looking forward to it. Have you... Uh do you think unlock the key to getting this kind of support that football gets transferred to basketball season here? You know, I think that type of support is here. And I think it's our job, especially within the basketball program, to generate the enthusiasm, to generate the, this type of feeling for our basketball program. I, I don't think you can ask the fans to automatically come out and support you. I think you have to have a product that's uh, enticing. I think your kids have to play hard. I think you have to have a good schedule. And then when you do all that, I don't think there's any question that the Aggies are going to support us. We'll see a lot of you. We look forward to it in just a few weeks. I'm looking forward to it, too. We start November 1st, and uh, we're excited about it. Tony Baroni, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Head coach a and basketball. Halftime continues in a moment. For nearly 50 years, car owners have used gum out fuel system cleaners to help eliminate hard starts, hesitations, and stalls. And there's Pennzoil quality in every product, which is why people know they can trust gum out to improve engine performance. Gum out solutions to engine problems from the people at Pennzoil. Gum out extra fuel injector cleaner is available at Napa Auto Parts. Nobody covers Texas football like H.S.E. With 16 reporters across the state, each week's show has complete coverage of the best high school football in the country. Texas high school football. There's highlights, coaches, players, and features designed to keep you in touch with all the action throughout the Lone Star State. It's all right here on High School Extra. Wednesdays at 6.30 on H.S.E. the universities of the Southwest Conference. We are educating today's young people to be America's leaders of tomorrow. If it weren't for your investment in higher education, the people of Brownsville wouldn't have Carmen Rocco to treat their children. Students in Houston wouldn't have David Murphy to teach them math. And if it weren't for Howard Cruzy, the cows of Brenham might not be as famous as they are today. The universities of the Southwest Conference. Without us, Texas is out of the game. The Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team is the official 1992 all-conference team selected by the fans. 
Vote for your favorite players at any participating Exxon station. Today's Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team nominee is Greg Shorf of Texas A&M. The junior tight end was the MVP of the Disneyland Pigskin Classic after catching four passes, including the winning TD. On behalf of Greg Shorf, Exxon is donating $1,000 to the Southwest Conference Scholarship Fund. There are four tight ends on the Supreme Team ballot. Jason Burleson of Texas, Don Hasley of Texas Tech, Baylor's Mike McKenzie, and the Aggie Short. Vote for your favorite at Exxon. On the field in College Station, the Texas Fighting Aggie Band. Today's Budweiser Top 10 report, number 20 USC at number one Washington, 17 game winning streak coming to that one for the Huskies. The Canes have 47, 47 straight home wins, but they are tied in the third quarter in that one. Elvis Gerbach returns at quarterback for Michigan in their matchup with Iowa later. That Stanford game, that Stanford's number one defense against Notre Dame's number one offense. LSU and Tennessee will be later, as will Penn State and Rutgers. Number nine, Alabama, nation's number one defense so far. They host South Carolina. Number 10, Colorado, takes this week off, and they play at Columbia, Missouri next week. Ten seven game a and on top of Texas Tech our uh, first half highlights brought to you by the Texas Lottery there are two that stand out yeah, two big ones that stand out of course started off with a and driving the length of the field and scoring Ranger was good on this drive he kept good unity on this drive but it was a first right up the middle he had 84 yards all on the ground you see Rodney Thomas just break through 37 yards uh, before he finally comes to a halt here this set up the touchdown by Greg Hill. Eight play drive all on the ground. Added a field goal of 10 to nothing until the final drive by Texas Tech in the first half, which covered 74 yards. And uh, the one that culminates that drive, uh, we are told they have never run quite this way. They've gone from this formation, but they never pitched to Hill the fullback. Yeah, it's usually a pitch down the line to the to the halfback Mars, but they pitched to Hill on this play. This may be the guttiest call that I've seen in college football, at least this year, if not for the last four or five years. To come out on fourth down and one, the crowd is screaming, and he calls a play. Spike Dykes calls a play and says, "Hey, we're not going to settle for anything less than a touchdown." That was the one where Morris faked up the middle. They ran the pitch to Hill for the touchdown, which made it 10 to 7 a.m. We'll have more in a moment. 
You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Introducing the last pair of sunglasses you'll ever need. Sunblockers, the stylish, lightweight sunglasses which block harmful UV light. I really like the color it does. I cut the glare down. Clear, crisp. What would you expect to pay for these high-quality sunglasses? Oh, at least 50 bucks. You've seen similar sunglasses advertised on national television for $49.95. But now, you can get sunblockers for just $29.95. Sunblockers also come with a lifetime replacement warranty. Even if you break them or lose them, send in the loss form for a free replacement, no questions asked. For a limited time only, order one pair of sunblockers and receive a second pair of sunblockers absolutely free. That's right, order one pair of sunblockers for the incredible price of $29.95 plus shipping and handling, and we'll give you a second pair free. Call the toll-free number on your screen now, or send check or money order to Sunblockers at the address shown. Sunblockers come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and a lifetime replacement warranty. Call the toll-free number now. You saw them all summer on the beach. Now the greatest collection of servers, centers, and spikers take their act indoors for great Western Bank Team Cup Volleyball. Tuesday night at 7 on HSE. At Texas A&M University, we're proud of our tradition of preparing Aggies for a lifetime of success. Looking back, I feel that A&M as a whole taught me how to go into the community and help other people as well as be a leader on my job. When you leave school, you have two things. You have your education, which relates directly to your, your job, and then you have personal skills, which allow you to deal with people. I had an advantage coming out of Texas A&M. There's no doubt. Preparing top students for the workforce. At Texas A&M, it's our greatest tradition. It's time for this week's Southwest Conference Classroom Champion. Smart may not be as important as knowing how to manage your time and knowing that you have to put in the hours. I think that's the, that's the two most important things. I mean, it helps to be smart, but I think you can really go far by, by working hard, and concentrating, and doing the best you can. Texas Tech offensive lineman Stacy Patrick and Scott Fitzgerald appreciate the hard work it takes to achieve academic success. I have a lot of respect for all the athletes because of all the time, especially the football takes. And I mean, just to be able, to, when you get done with the day with football, to sit down and actually have some energy left to study is tough enough. And I think most of everybody does pretty well. Really. The universities of the Southwest Conference. We're educating today's young people to be America's leaders of tomorrow. If it weren't for your investment in higher education, the people of Brownsville wouldn't have Carmen Rocco to treat their children. Students in Houston wouldn't have David Murphy to teach them math. And if it weren't for Howard Cruzy, the cows of Brenham might not be as famous as they are today. The universities of the Southwest Conference. Without us, Texas is out of the picture. 10-7 A&M first half statistics are brought to you by Coors Light. There were no turnovers and no penalties in that first half and a big edge in total yards for the Aggies but only a three point edge on the board. That's the biggest that three point difference in this football game. 87 ground yards for Greg Hill 52 ground yards for Bam Morris. They are the individual standouts. Robert Hall eight for 14 77 yards. Stranger just two of seven 25 yards will be ready for the start of the second half in a moment. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Who've got the magic touch? This exclusive new collector's treasury of the Planters' 40 famous hits has never been so offered much. before. I watched the harbor line. These are many of the most loved recordings in music history. Recordings you always love. My brain. 
the Platter's number one hit. Is to linger with you. Heavenly shades of night are falling. It's twilight time. Touching magic. Smoke gets in your The things I've done. The music all America fell in love with. Oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. Forty all-time favorites. Pretending that I'm doing well. The Platters, the original group's famous records. This exclusive collection is not sold in any store. Order now. You get all 40 original Platters hits. To save COD fees, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-522-5333. Or simply $19.95 for three records or two cassettes, $24.95 for two compact discs to the Platters. Box 3488, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 10163. Please add $3 for postage and handling. Money back if not delighted. This offer ends soon, so mail or call now. 1-800-522-5333. 1-800-522-5333. Then 7 A&M as we get set to start the second half. It'll be the Raiders kicking to the Aggies who won the toss and deferred in the second half. Billy Mitchell and Ray Mickens waiting for Davis's kick. We'll see if the Red Raiders are able to sustain that momentum which they definitely took into the halftime locker room. Oh you'd love to have been a fly on the wall in their locker room. I bet they were yelling screaming and for the first five minutes it was chaos. In there. Robert Hall mainly uh, short stuff through the year in the first half but a wizard in ball handling on that touchdown take to Morris and pitch to Bruce Hill to make it a three point game. Best kick of the day by far by John Davis that's two yards beyond the end line and the Aggies start first and ten from their own 20 yard line. Here's the quarterback comparison. Ranger just two of seven for 25 yards. Is that a big enough sample to know whether he's really solved that problem? Well, I think they felt that they were controlling the ball so well on the ground that they really didn't use Granger. But I did see Preston just before the end of halftime, just before half came up, Preston was up throwing three or four balls. So they may not be real pleased with Granger's stats either. They open with Hill and Thomas together in the eye formation. Tony Harrison. Wide left. And Ryan Matthews in motion as the give goes to the first man through Thomas. And you see that high pumping style of Rodney Thomas straight up for a gain of at least nine, maybe a first down. Now we came on saying that the Aggies uh, had three major months. How'd they do? Well, they got a B because they have, they dictated on defense, but they allowed that last drive. Slam, bam, bam, uh, Morris is 53 yards, and GHT, we give him an A on that. He's got 87 yards on the ground. Ten yards on the carry by Thomas, who is replaced by Doug Carter on another first and ten. Beck yet to go to that eight-man front, which has caused some running problems for Hill. Starting uh, shooting into the backfield this time for the loss is Marcus Coleman, true freshman out of Lake Highlands in Dallas, who averaged 26 tackles. Mercy as a senior. He really came up fast on that corner support. That's what you want. You want that who's going to come up there and just go. Reckless abandon that he did at that time. Dropped him for a loss. Returned an interception and they went over Wyoming. Six yards for a touchdown. And he stops Greg Hill for a two yard loss to bring up second and 12. Ranger straight drop. And caught at the 44 by Ryan Matthews. First down in him. 17 yards, that's their biggest game through the air today. Wiley on the coverage and the tackle. And if you ever want to test whether a quarterback has that touch, you run the out pattern. This is a well-thrown ball. Good spiral coming out there. Right on the mark. Good complete play by Granger. And here's Granger again. Let's watch that elbow, see if it gets high. 
a little bit higher than normal on that play. And it wobbled a little yes. toward the end. We're, we're picking nits on a 17-yard yeah, completion. Eighth catch for Matthews. First and 10, Aggie. Pitch to Hill. Running room right tackle, his favorite spot today. As White makes the tackle, his favorite blockers have been Ellisor and Matthews on that right side, the right guard and tackle. And Hill loves to get this ball about six yards off the line of scrimmage. See him run parallel. Now when he gets it, he puts the ball away. There's the vision. Cut back inside. Good yardage. All those eye backs love to get that ball deep. Greg Hill. Fifth in the conference coming in, averaging 88 yards per game, already surpassing his average today. And he owns the Aggie touchdown. Second and two. One more time on the ground and a first down at the Red Raider 43-yard line for Hill. Back to the way they started the game. Nothing real fancy, straight ahead. Well, I think that when they went in at halftime, a and went in at halftime, they said, hey, we moved the ball well on the ground. We controlled it a lot. Sure, we let that one drive on us, but we moved the football. We bogged down a little bit. Let's see if we can come back out, get back to our game plan, establish it up front, control the offensive line, and let Greg Hill, Rodney Thomas just kind of pick their way through there. Marching smartly so far in the first possession of the third quarter. Carter, the motion fullback. Hill, a pitch left this time. And they're just fighting six, seven, eight yards at a clip on this drive. Anthony Armour came up for the tackle. It almost looks like that old Green Bay sweep where everybody would go running around. Everybody knew the sweep was going to come, and you know it's going to come in this game. Baylor in Texas with early leads. Texas has not lost to Rice since 19. 65, the longest winning streak one team has enjoyed over another in South Coast Conference history. Cliff Gross is in at the fullback spot on second and four. As Matthews goes in motion. And one more time, GHT. Greg Hill time, first down, 26 yard line. A whole lot of the same on this drive if you're the Raider defense. Well, two things. First of all, they pin Steve Hoffman in the middle, number 74. They nail him in there. He slides along. He's stuck right there. He plays across. They also shot the linebacker through on the right, and then Hill saw where the linebacker came through and just cut right back into the hole. So Hill now over the 100-yard mark, and those gentlemen have a lot to do with it. 23 carries, 115 for Greg Hill. And another first and 10. They stay with it. This time, no game. First man up to Green Hill was Stephen Gaines. A shocker in progress in Madison in the third quarter. Wow. Arkansas just has no offense this year. Second and ten. We, we talked in the first half about whether Tech would shake up their defensive look. So far, no, despite all of Hill's success. They are playing him honest. He is a workhorse on this drive and stumbled at about the 24 and then fell forward for an extra yard. And you would almost think second and 10. I mean, that's a sure passing down. And still A&M comes out and runs. Now they need to get to Granger back there, get a little bit more confidence, throw that ball, throw it with accuracy. They've had to rely so much on the run in the past, it's almost like they're, they are, their offensive scheme is reverting back to those habits. A&M on third down has averaged needing about six yards. Tech has averaged needing about four yards. And the Aggies have not picked up a third down conversion yet. 0 for 6 on the afternoon. They need nine here. And it's Hill on the swing pass. First down, 13-yard line. Donnie Brooks on the tackle. Well, a very safe play on that call. What they did is they, they ran their receivers deep to run the secondary off. You'll see here the two deep men. They run them to run them off, and they run a little underneath screen to Hill. He picks up the blocks by the linemen here. See, just dump it over the back. 
Now he turns around. Look at those big linemen out in front of him. That's Dowson, Harrison, Wesley. They're all out in front getting those blocks. Bill says uh, coming into this year, his goal, one of his goals, is to have one game with as many receiving yards as rushing yards. His first pass today, first down, Mitchell the motion man, Thomas first man up, and he's inside the 10. So they finally give Hill a breather and give it to Rodney Thomas, who's tackled by Sean Jackson. And one of the people that has to be happy to be back is number 51, John Ellisor. There he is, right guard, and watch, he just sticks in there. That's good leg drive. Ooh, that's what you call a plus two block. When you get your man on the ground. A pancake. That's a, a pancake. Pin. Offensive depleter. A depleter. <laughs> All of the above. Thomas got four. Second down. Thomas again slips inside the 10. Lost it. Picked up by Tracy Soul. And the Raiders take over at the 19. First turnover of the day, and it could be a huge one. That is a huge one. Spike Dykes will tell his defense, never quit. I don't care where you are on the field, don't quit. Big hit here. Look at the ball, it just comes flying out, way up in the air. Tracy Saul, he knows what to do with it. One block, and he almost breaks this all the way down the sideline. Mike Lissio caused the fumble by Rodney Thomas, and the Raiders take it back. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame. A reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or off road. <laughs> GMC Truck, the strength of experience. Silver Summer! The word is out. It's gum out. Today, car owners are learning to improve engine performance. It takes gum out fuel system cleaners. Gum out's tough ingredients help eliminate hard starts, hesitations, and stalls. And there's Pennzoil quality in every product, which is why so many people know they can trust gum out. Gum out, solutions to engine problems from the people at Pennzoil. Gum out extra fuel injector cleaner is available at AutoZone. This had been an error-free game until Mike Lissio was able to rake his arm across Rodney Thomas and cause this fumble. There he is, number 91. He rakes the ball out. Come Saul into your picture. This is as good as an interception. Now, I'm serious. If he had gotten one block, he was down the sideline. If they had blocked that one man, he'd have picked up a wall of blockers. Mostly Greg Hill on that drive. He ends the drive tackling Saul. Raiders, first and 10, they're 19. With Dan Morris, the lone setback. And Hall underthrowing Darrell Mitchell at the 31 yard line, second and 10. Eric England giving Hall an assist as we grade the Texas Tech Moss. Well, they have gotten to Granger a little bit. They have one sack. He was only two of seven at halftime. Quick strikes, they haven't done very well on quick strikes except that one long drive, not very quick. Tune out the 12th man, I've got to give him an A. They got down there, fourth down, one foot to go, 70,000 plus screaming here, and they scored. Ball with the visual audible at the line on second and 10. He's got Hill deep, full layout, caught at the 40. The nation's leading receiver stretches for a 20-yard game. He keeps on playing the way he is. He may make the Dave Rowe All-Conference team early. This is a great play. Little quick in pattern. Look at the concentration. Lay out there. Look at the football. Bring it in. Again, well-thrown ball. Look at the layout. Good concentration. Once it touches your fingers, he believes it's his. They are finally this year getting a chance to see what he can do when he's healthy. 
injury problems each of his first two years. Bruce Hill turned back as he tried to reach the uh, line of scrimmage, and they may give him the line, but no more. Well, I tell you, the national title would uh, go by the wayside if they don't pull this one up. Absolutely. And it's a stunned crowd, too. I mean, the crowd is stunned right now. They're getting momentum on there. They've got a lot of enthusiasm, but they're seeing their A&M team really have really tested today. Better than a two-touchdown favorite coming in as Hall is obliterated inside the 30. Buckley first, and then his friends arrive. Big players make big plays, and Marcus Buckley in the outside. Nobody touches him. Look at that speed. Good concentration. Gets in there. One happy young man. Fourth sack of the day by the wrecking crew. Buckley has half those four. I thought it was an amazing story about he talked about going to offense one time playing Pee Wee football. He said I lined up at offensive tackle. They told me to tackle the guy with the ball. He turned around, tackled his own man. My own said, guy. Back to off. Back to defense. Coach, he had the ball. Robert Hall airs it out deep and incomplete. Donald Marshall step for step coverage that time. And the Red Raiders do not turn the turnover into an extended drive. They have the two cornerbacks here, Frazier and Glenn, play as good a football as you'll find at cornerback. They run one on one coverage about 90% of the time. That was just great coverage down the line. As you set up the return. They won't get one. Tremendous Red Raider bounce and. No you don't get to do that if you touch it at the 13 that's where it's down not at the one. 632 to go third quarter and a three point game. You're watching college football on your local prime affiliate. In the pages of National Geographic magazine. For only $21 a year, all the wonders of our world unfold before you. You'll enjoy award-winning photographs that explore the remarkable diversity of our world. Whether you're trekking across Africa or racing to adventure, National Geographic takes you far beyond ordinary reporting. Join the Society, and you'll also receive up to six valuable reference maps. National Geographic promises you the best and nothing less. Call 1-800-592-1222. Charge it if you like, or send $21.3650 in Canada to National Geographic. Or call 1-800-592-1222. Serve and volley. Point. Counterpoint. Tournament favorites and surprising underdogs. Prime Network presents the 1992 ATP Tour. Friday night at 7 on HSE. 10-7 a.m., 6.32 to play in the third quarter. They will take over at their own 13-yard line after a 57-yard punt by Robert King of Texas Tech. And all tied up in Atlanta in the fourth quarter. Number 21, NC State, and number 23, Georgia Tech in the ACC showdown. Rose and Thomas in the backfield. And Rodney Thomas slices off big yardage off the left side of the 27 yard line 14 yards first down. Let's check out some other news from around the league on our Ford Southwest Conference updates. We begin at Rice where Trevor Cobb is the number five ranked rusher in the country averaging just under 137 yards per game. He's taking on Texas today and then after they finish they'll get ready for Houston and Southwest Louisiana a home game for Houston but is at Rice Stadium because the Astros are in the Astrodome tonight. SMU missing that many players because of their NCAA suspensions today in their matchup at Baylor. 
Rodney Thomas breaking two tackles, another first down. Great pursuit by Quincy White from inside linebacker to prevent even more. Gain of 15 yards on the running play. Thomas giving Hill a nice breather. TCU's Derek Cullors, who we saw return 197 yards for a touchdown last week in Dallas, leads the nation by virtue of that return. His average nearly 35 yards per return. Texas coming into that game at Rice today with the record 26 game winning streak in the series with the out. First man through Gross stretches. Ball was loose well after the tackle made at the 44 by Anthony Armour. And if Rice pulls the upset today, not only <laughs> yeah. do they make history, they make fashion history. They certainly do. We Fred understand Goldsmith. Fred Goldsmith has told his players that he will shave his head if Rice beats Texas today. You know, that, even if you're a Texas fan, that's almost that's reason. almost enough. <laughs> well, maybe not, but... <laughs> Well, as the kids say, not, not allowed. They had a six for Cliff Row, second and four. And the extra effort again. Backing his way to the 48 was Thomas. Chris Ori made the stop, third and short. I'm really surprised Granger has not mixed up some passes. I know they're controlling the line of scrimmage, and they've been able to get those first downs. But it's been a long time since we saw him throw that little dump pass. A little screen. He's just not throwing the football. Now, when you've got third down and one or two, and you've got the running backs, the caliber that they have, you know, it's a, that's a, maybe an easier decision, but you still think you're going to mix it up. Well, they're both well over 100, and Granger is four for nine. So, if you're wondering why so few passes, there's your answer. This is a Texas Tech timeout call with four minutes and 33 seconds. In quarter number three, our score right where we were at the half, A&M 10 to 7. As an engine builder, I recommend for longer engine life, change your oil between two and 3,000 miles. The second thing, make sure you use Pinzo because Pinzo will protect. I feel like changing the oil and keeping good and clean oil in your car is probably the most important things on the vehicles today. I use it for myself, I use it for all my family cars, and I definitely would recommend it for anybody to use Pinzo, yes. Pinzo, performance, protection, quality, that says it all. Last July, Kelly Davis of Arlington was brutally beaten, then left to die. Thankfully, Kelly did survive, but treatment for her head injuries could top $2 million. We're hoping you can help. On Thursday night, October 29th, singer B.J. Thomas will perform two shows at Caravan of Dreams in Fort Worth. Tickets are $20, with all of that money going to pay for Kelly's care. For reserved seats, call any Rainbow Ticketmaster outlet. Kelly has dedicated her life to helping others. Now it's our chance to help her. We hope to see you on October 29th. The game breaking play. Or the hit of a lifetime. The madness of football in the fall is memories in the making. Northeast Louisiana and McNeese State live Saturday night at 7 on HSE. Your favorite team, the highlights and insights, strategy and stars. Keep up with college football as head coaches cover the game within the game. The coaches shows all season long on HSE, the best team on TV. Boy, some people, uh, thank goodness, just can't be away from their television even for one glorious autumn afternoon. In well, including. I just, well, I thought I might do an update right here. Hey, you know, we look pretty good. Not you got bad, the huh? baseball game. Oh, that's baseball? I like that pitcher. He's probably <laughs> making a lot more than I am. 10-7 <laughs> game. Not that shocking, I don't think, for the Raiders. Their people were telling us yesterday, watch for an upset. They thought they were emotionally trying to pull one. Well, the series is, this series always has, has had good games. Another good one today. Thomas will, I don't think, get the first. Staggered toward the sideline by Saul. He needed right at one yard and did not get it. And David Davis is on to kick it away. That's the kind of open field tackle you like to see from your safety. When he comes up and hits that back and doesn't allow him to break free for a yard or two, drops him fourth down and a foot. Excellent play. Now what does he do? He doesn't go over and rest. He has to go back and return punts. One of the best, he led this league his first two years in punt returns, third last year, second this year. That 
one is not down. No, it's a touchback. They couldn't quite corral that loose ball. But what you want to do on this play is not carry the ball into the end zone. You want to swat the ball back. And they didn't. They carried it into the end zone. Next week, our Exxon Southwest Conference game of the week will take us to Rice Stadium, where we will see whether it's bald Fred Goldsmith bring his owls into the meeting with SMU. Check your local listings for a noon kickoff central time, if you can be with us live. Halftime now at South Bend, Indiana. Still second quarter is Baylor wiping up on SMU and Waco. Halftime in Houston, 6 up in Texas. Mitchell in motion on first and 10 Raiders, 4.15 in the third quarter. Hall will keep it. He's got a lot of room. Slides to the 32, first down. Could have been much worse for the Aggies. It sure could have been. He looked up and saw a sea of green, and then the quickness in the secondary finally closing. That one ends in a tie. Boston College came in with three consecutive shutouts. They give up 24 today. West Virginia blocked the field goal inside the final minute to preserve the top. Inside give Bruce Hill. Gang tackled. Strong enough to carry the pile up to the 35. Adams and Tackleman in on it. Wisconsin continues to lead Ohio State. When was the last time that series went that way? And Georgia adds another touchdown at Arkansas. Five ranked teams in the ACC. That, again, has got to be a first. Hill turned what should have been no gain into a pickup of four. Paul finds Hill out of the backfield, out of a Frazier tackle, out of another one. Foot race, and Bates finally saves six. But Hill to the 36, a gain of 28 yards. The difference between this going all the way is an outstanding effort by, by Bates to come across on the play. If he quits on the play, they score. Good time back there, line giving a lot of time for Hall to look downfield. Finds Hill, now he's down the sideline. Now Bates is going to come into your picture. He's number 29. Nothing but green grass ahead. Here comes Bates. He doesn't quit on the play. Big play by the safety. Another weapon emerges for the Red Raider attack this week, and it's Bruce Hill, the fullback from Trimble Tech High School. Flags down in what has been a virtually penalty-free game, and it looked like Charlie Biggers moved from right tackle. Interesting, though, the way Biggers moved off the line, they were going to pass again. Now, Spike doesn't like that. He doesn't like mistakes. He said, we can't beat ourselves. Ball starts. Offense. Still first down. And they haven't. No, they haven't. They've, they've, they've been very, very good. That's why they're in this football game. They have played a great football game today. And they're playing against a great football team. Best against best today. Offense against defense. And he'll almost made another stretching grab. In fact, this would have been his coup de grace if he brought this one in. But this one was just almost impossible. He had it for a second, though. You could see the way the ball just stopped when it hit his hand. Looks a more and more like Michael Irvin in the making, doesn't he? Watch this stretch now. Low touches his hands. He's got it. When he comes down, he doesn't come down with control, but close. Second and 15. Beats the blitz, but they did hurry him into misfiring for Mitchell, and it'll be third and 15. Even when they don't get the sack, the wrecking crew will uh, take their toll one way or the other, usually. They come on you fast. You see that mountain of, uh, of maroon coming in there. It's awfully hard for that quarterback to sit back there and pick up anybody other than his prime receiver. Had he been able to look downfield, he had Donald Marshall coming on a, a slant across the middle, and he was wide open. Mike Honeycutt into the game. He's wide right. Mitchell inside of him. Hill wide left. Hall looking over the middle. And it's low intended for Morris and incomplete. Third downs 
for both offenses are just about a washout today. Well, they have a category they call hurries, and that's what A&M is doing right now. They're making Texas Tech hurry the football. That time, Marcus Buckley from the outside made him hurry the football. What do you think of a fake punt here? No, I don't think a fake punt. I think what you want to do is punt them down inside the 10, 15 yard line and hope that your defense can stop them and get good field position. Obviously, Dykes agrees. Sideways hop. Not bad at all. They will uh, mark it out at the 10 yard line. 31 yards. And they do pin the Aggies. As always, happy to have our uh, Prime Network viewers along with us this afternoon from Kyle Field and College Station. More gray hairs for both those gentlemen today. <laughs> well, they are two, two of the finest coaches you would want to meet. Different styles, but uh, just outstanding results. 2.45 in the third. Carter and Hill in the eye. Greg Hill time again. A stone wall after a pickup of two. Every time they hand it to uh, somebody in a maroon uniform, he's fresh. Whether it's Hill, Thomas, Gross, Carter, they all get breaks. But now is the time for Granger to pass the football. That time you could see Texas Tech starting to creep up in that box. They had eight men inside from tackle to tackle. And now it's the time for Granger to fake play action where you draw those linebackers up, you bring the ball out, look downfield, and you find the open wide receiver. The injured Red Raider is uh, number 74, Steve Hoffman. A key figure up front, nose tackle. Senior from Shirts, who's north of San Antonio. He is walking off. He's number 74 in there. Probably gets a leg caught underneath him. Now he has to stay square in there because the play is right up in there. He gets a leg bent back up underneath him, it looks like. But he has really had a fine football game today. He and really Stephen Gaines have really been the tight guys up inside there. Jackson coming from the outside. Pitts has put some good pressure on. Their defense has played very well. Second and a long eight, 225 in the third. A scoreless third quarter so far. Play action, Granger swings to Thomas. And Thomas met by Damon Wickware, the linebacker, and his linebacking mate, Armour. And it'll be third down. When Granger turned around, this was play action, fakes into the line. And when Granger turned around, he had Lissio looking him right in the nostril. And he picked up the, picked up the yardage. He made a nice pass, good adjustment. Boy, such a visual image you create. I used to love looking down the nostrils of the quarterback. I mean, I was close. Third and four for Granger. Quick drop and incomplete intended for James McKeon, the sophomore tight end. Sean Banks, I think, gets a hand on this one. And hunting will be David Davis for the Aggies with a minute 38 in the third. Well, that time, Banks is Banks is the backer. He's got the tight end off the line. He's number 46. You're going to see him just get a hand right in the right of your screen. Look, just get that hand in and knock that ball away. Big play. They should get good field position now. Great day for Davis. Saul at his 37-yard line. Wind has gotten stronger as the afternoon has progressed. And it will knock this one down at the 40. Saul knocked down at the 42. The kick went 43 for Davis. But as this afternoon has developed, this is some of the best field position that Texas Tech has begun to drive with. They have that much time with the wind at their back. How big a factor? A big factor because Robert Hall, since he stopped handing the football off to Bam Morris, is passing the football, looking downfield for Lloyd Hill. And I think that with that wind at his back, it's got to be a big plus. to go to the air again. Bam Morris dragged to the 44 by Eric England. Good job by Hall that time as he knew Buckley 
was bearing down on him and waited to get Buckley close enough to him that he couldn't bring down the, the receiver. England showing great pursuit at 264 pounds, dragging down the, the smaller, quicker man. And on the backside, that's Charlie Bigger, 68. Good pass blocking against Chatham. Just keep him away from there. Keep that big body up there. Keep those feet wide. That's a plus block. Only got two, second and eight. To the sideline for Hill, and he will be close and probably have a first down. Knocked out by Frazier. They still haven't gone for it for everything yet. No, they haven't. And you kind of get the feeling that they're doing a lot of out patterns, and those are setups. But on that play, the blitz, the receiver has to take that route because he's not going to have time to get deep. Well, uh, officially 183 empty seats today. A series record at Kyle Field. 69,817. Largest crowd ever to watch the Aggies play the Raiders. That one delivered to Mitchell and immediately meeting him from behind was Bates. You feel it when Bates sticks you at 6'4", 225. Dave, you've mentioned that they haven't gone deep the hill all day. What is happening is that Robert Hall, when he takes the ball, he backs out from center. And what he's seeing is a host of maroon coming right up the gut at him. He's got to be, he's got to pull that ball down quick and find the underneath person. He hasn't had enough time to go more than 15, 17 yards downfield. Six yard gain for Mitchell, second and four. Hall on the roll. Pump fake. Now goes deep and he's got it. Lloyd Hill gives the Raiders the lead. difference time for the quarterback makes that time Hall came out on a little boot to the strong side he avoided the rush and he allowed Lloyd Hill to get downfield and Hill put a move on the cornerback Glenn that was unbelievable Glenn just came up and just stopped and he fake pumped him one time Hill went deep and Hall had the time to look downfield and find him with one second left in the third quarter, John Davis can make it 14-10 Tech. And out of Honeycutt's hold, he does. So they go almost three full quarters setting up this very play. They certainly do. Now down the bottom of your screen is Hill. It's an out pattern. Now he fake pumps him right there. Now see when he turns up? He also has time. Look at the distance. Glenn bit on that fake pump. Thought he was doing the out pattern as they've done all day long. Hill turned it up. Hall had time. Results. Touchdown. You want to see the results of a quarterback or reaction of a quarterback? This is it. Yes. Finally. <laughs> Heisman pose there? I don't know. It's a little high step, though, isn't it? Lloyd Hill's third touchdown reception of 92. By far his biggest. And a little down in the mouth, perhaps, on the maroon and white sideline. Well, down in the mouth, perhaps. But this Aggie team has come from behind of three of their four games this year. So they're used to being in this position. In fact, R.C. Slocum said, hey, that's been good for us because we haven't blown teams out. So I don't. I think that what you're going to see is I think you're going to see a poised A&M team come back. Good point. He said yesterday, if we had four blowout wins, I'd be worried coming into this one because I don't think we'll have a blowout. Sure enough, they don't. They trail by four. As Davis said, uh, it's time five yards beyond the end line. Still one second before the third quarter comes to a close. What do you say? That's for you, Mom? <laughs> Real close to his mom. And true to form, you can't get a word out of Robert Hall. No matter what That's happens. Right. That's true. Got a little dance out of him, though. One more snap, and the third quarter is in the books. Greg Hill 
four yards. And that is the end of the third quarter. Scoreless until the Hall Hill connection with one second in the period gives the Raiders the lead. Another day in the trenches got you down, been kicked around, so now you're all strung out. Maybe caught in a jam and have a bad attitude. This has got to be some sort of bad dream. <laughs> Don't have a stroke. We can save you. Just get off your feet and get away from it all. Take a break. Relax. Refuel. Watch Prime and get relief from the everyday grind. This is an effort to reach men and women who served in the United States Armed Forces. It concerns benefits reserved exclusively for honorably discharged veterans aged 30 to 75. Please use the toll-free number to respond. Call now for free information on a veterans-only life insurance plan that costs just $1 a week. When you qualify, you lock in the highest possible benefit amount available to you. These veterans' life insurance benefits are guaranteed never to go down. You are eligible if you serve during peacetime or war active duty or reserves, or any branch of service. Call now, and you'll also get a free guide to veterans' benefits that explains government benefits you may be entitled to collect. Only veterans, their spouses and widows aged 30 to 75, qualify for this exclusive offer, term life insurance, for just $1 a week. Don't wait. Call this toll-free number now for your free information and free guide to veterans' benefits from Veterans Life Insurance Company. to go in Kyle Field. Record series crowd on hand and most of them are absolutely stunned. But this Aggie team is a fourth quarter team this year. And they open this fourth quarter second and seven. The pitch to Greg Hill. First down. Almost a bunch more. 32 yard line and Quincy White made the saving stuff. You talked about them being a fourth quarter team. They've outscored their opponents 42 to 8 in that fourth quarter behind in three of their first four games at halftime they led at halftime today by only three trail by four coming into this fourth quarter but this is where the 12th man has its most vivid effect Greg Hill head on hit by Stephen Gaines no game Let's take you through our scores uh, this afternoon. Eight play 84 yard drive culminated in Hill's two yard touchdown and so far that is the only Aggie touchdown. They led 10 to nothing after Venetulius' 21 yard field goal. And then very late in the first half out of the full house set Bruce Hill took the pitch took it in three point halftime game four point tech lead thanks to the hall to Hill 41 yard bomb. Second down and nine. Carter is the fullback. Mitchell, the motion man, Granger play action. He wants to go to the tight end short, but he drops it. And it's third and nine. No problem with the pass that time. No, the pass was there. Short dropped it. He tried to catch it on his hip. The ball hit on his hip and bounced off. I was looking at Granger's reaction when he did it. He just took his hands and almost like fists and just put him down like he was really frustrated. Now, great athletes love situations like this. I'm sure Granger likes this. Hey, give me that ball. Let me throw it one more time. I know I can get it. Wilbert Diggins is on as an extra wide out. And Granger for the first time today out of the shotgun. And this time, Short will hang on and have the first down. Out of bounds at the 45, 13-yard pickup. He went right back to him. 
Well, that's confidence on your quarterback to go back. Sharp's the tight end. Here's your secondary drop. You're going to see Sharp come across the middle and right on wide open. The broken coverage there. He picks it up. Now, instead of going out of bounds, he gets the first down. And the different reaction from Granger on that play. Yes, that's it. Now we're going. I think kind that of emotional on. surge yeah. he gave in the Stanford That's game. exactly what I was thinking of. Pitch to Hill. Lissio hit him after a pickup of two. Big day from Mike Lissio. And I will never forget when Granger went into that huddle. He had been benched in the third quarter, was doing terrible, and he runs into that huddle, and I mean he looked every one of those linemen in the face and said, we're going to score. And that's what you want from your quarterback. You want a quarterback that takes control. You also don't want a, a person like Greg Hill come limping out of the football game. Rodney Thomas replaces Greg Hill on second and eight. Long count by Granger to give to Thomas. Gaping hole, first down, Raider 41. Well, we don't know how long he'll be out, but that's how much There's they no lose. They ball. lose nothing. Watch the cut. Now, at the point of attack, it's going right over Ellisor there. Now, watch right there. He cuts back. You see, he sees that little seam to the backside. Picks up a good block there by Harrison, 55, and he picks up the yardage. That's just great vision, and both of them have it. Not often do you have two running backs that complement each other like Thomas and Hill. Surprise so far in Norman. Rodney Thomas again, breaking the first hit. Picks up eight or nine. Into the secondary, the tackle made by Marcus Coleman, and at the Orange Bowl, deja vu all over again. Miami by one in the fourth quarter. Georgia Tech's Scott Sisson, for the seventh time in his career, has kicked a game-winning field goal. He breaks the hearts of the Wolfpack. He gets set to take on Texas Tech next week. They kick that field goal with one second, I believe, on the clock. Second and three. First man through Doug Carter. First down to the 30. And the Aggies have answered this challenge with more straight ahead physical running. Well, they're doing what they do best, and that's drive the football. Boy, a lot of huge matchups around college football and some, some surprises. That's not one of them, obviously. This could be. But the Aggies showing they have some other thoughts in a long time to come from 14 to 10 down. 11.43 to go in the game. First and 10. Rodney Thomas right side this time. And even when the Raiders sniff it out pretty well, they get three, four, five yards. Another tackle by Coleman. Well, that time Thomas broke to the outside, but I thought he had a hole back inside. Watch here up front. These linemen have got to be tired on defense. There's Gaines getting doubled, but Thomas comes bouncing to the outside. The reason Hoffman got a good, good pop in there, and so did Quincy White. They make them bounce to the outside. When they do, there's someone standing out there waiting to get them. Thomas one more time. Not quite for the first, and now the backward surge, but they'll probably give him the 21 yard line, and the line of game was just inside the 21. 135 yard day for the backup tailback. Well, who does about everything, he even unloads the truck when they get back. <laughs> yeah, tell that story. <laughs> they said that when they came back from a game, he was down here at 6 o'clock in the morning helping them unload the truck. This was not after any game, this was after the Tulsa yeah. loss last year. Showed up at 6 a.m. So no big deal. I used to do it in high school. Will not take a compliment. Absolutely selfless. Show up the motion, man. They need two. They call on Rodney Thomas, who will take it in. Today, 
he's Mr. Everything. Thomas made a tremendous cut back to the weak side again with that good vision. I sound like an echo going back and forth about it, but he makes the right decision. Burst through the hole for the score, and A&M has answered Texas Tech with a touchdown. And Atulius for the extra point. Davis holds, and the kick is no good, and he has missed his third extra point this year. Oh, and that's huge because that means a field goal will win. Thomas gives them only a two-point lead. Watch the top of your screen. You're going to see the hole open up. There's, look at the move back. Almost gets touched in there. Then he sees that hole and just bursts through it. Here's another view of from ground level. You see him just plant on that turf and just cut back in there. You're not going to bump him down. Nobody locks his legs out, knocks his legs out. Best day of the young career of Rodney Thomas. He gives the Aggies the lead, but a long way to go. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame, a reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or off road. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. Yeah, that's me. And it still seems like a dream. But you don't have to be an Olympic marathoner to enjoy the benefits of running. Hi, I'm Frank Shorter from Runner's World magazine. Did you know that in as little as 20 minutes, three times a week, you can trim down, shape up, and have more energy than you ever thought possible? This free book shows you how. It's filled with super training tips for stronger and smoother running. And it's yours free, just for trying Runner's World. Every month, Runner's World tells you all about high-energy meals, training secrets, staying healthy, even buying the perfect running shoes. Call now for your no-risk trial subscription to Runner's World. You'll get 12 big issues for almost half off the cover price, just three payments of $5.99. There's no obligation. If you're not completely satisfied, get back every penny you paid. And with your paid subscription, you'll receive the exclusive Runner's World training log. Call the toll-free number on your screen now. You're tempted to vote for a backup. Here's a nomination. Rodney Thomas, who came into this game for the year, having gained 157 yards. Today, he has 19 carries and 157 yards. But Venetulius who is now 9 for 12 in PATs. He leaves the door open for a Red Raider field goal, and they can regain the lead if they can manage, manage that. Tracy Saul is driven seven yards back, and Robert Hall will take over at his 20. Well, the bus story, the unloading the truck story, is one indication of the, uh, the character and the humility of Rodney Thomas is another well, great story. The other story that we understand was true, that he was at a, an all-star game and got a ring and a watch and found out there were two sick boys in his town, and he went and gave the ring to one, the watch to another, in the newspaper, and then they came and they said, hey, we want to write a story about it. He said, no, that's not important. Quite a football player and quite a person. First man through, Bruce Hill, and a couple. Second and about eight, and they're waving those, those white towels now. A little visual added to the audio for Texas Tech, but they've tuned it out so far. Very, very they effectively. They really have. And what they need on this drive is they need to move the football, perhaps get in field goal position. There's a lot of time on the clock. It's not time to panic for Texas Tech. Hall will look for the waggle and fire and almost intercepted by Atkinson. And if he got it, he would have taken it in. Jason Atkinson will look at this one over and over on video and just kick himself. He certainly will. He had, a, he had an interception right in line. I don't know who he was throwing to unless he was throwing to Mitchell out there. Atkinson's a great story. His dad went here. I think his grandfather went here. He said he's been coming to this field since he's been two years old.
This one caught, and Lloyd Hill has a first down at his 45-yard line. Michael Hendricks ending a 23-yard connection. When you watch Robert Hall drop back, he can throw dropping back better than anybody you've ever seen. He throws his ball off the back foot. You're going to see Hill, number 18, come into the center, breaks the zone. There he is, just looks that ball in. Got good field position now. He may lack something, but I don't know what it is. He is the total package of wide receiver. Bam Morris. Turns that one into a pickup of about five. And what you would like to do if you're Texas Tech is run that clock down. Take a lot of time. Let the quarterback look up. They're almost getting in field goal range. The wind is going to be somewhat of a factor because it's in their face. But they're running that clock down. It's now down under in nine minutes. You want to run it down, pick up a couple more first downs. Don't give AM a lot of time. That wind began five miles an hour. Much stronger as the day is worn on. Check with me, Paul. Paul makes it at the line, fires over the middle, and has Mitchell for the first down to the 33. 16 yards as he beats Frazier. Their post patterns, and what Mitchell does is uses his body so well, once he makes that break inside, all he has to do is look up and catch that football. A Stanford comeback in the third quarter at Notre Dame. And Washington has first blood against number 20 Southern Cal. Washington does not play UCLA. That might be the toughest matchup in the Pac-10 all year. Miami adds a safety. They lead Florida State now by three. Bam Morris. For four or five yards. Raiders now at the Aggie 30. That time when Morris looked up, he saw number 53, Peter Allen. He saw him go through a hole. He got right on his tail and ran right up through there. But if you're on Texas Tech on the sideline, you're saying, hurry up, clock, keep on ticking off. Well, two years ago, they faced down this type of challenge by Robert Hall. And one of his first big contributions, in fact, for Spike Dykes came here. Almost pulled it out. They got turned away at the end and lost by four. Option pitch, Morris. To the 27-yard line, Larry Jackson and Patrick Bates combined for the tackle. And we will look at third and about four, 7.23 and counting. Where is the 12th man? They are silent right now. Well, they are. They're concerned. A lot of time on the clock, though. As I said, if you're Texas A&M, you're saying, hey, go ahead and try your field goal now. Let our offense have it back. If you're Texas Tech, you're saying, just give us one more first down. We'll get that ball down inside the 20-yard line. Got a sure field goal from that distance. Blitz coming. Hall just got it off in time, and it is caught, yes, by Mitchell. First down at the 22. One official says a catch, and look, Doyle Jackson is going to agree with him. First down on the tip drill play. I saw one come in saying, no, it wasn't a catch, but the other official had a better view of it. The ball bounced off the defender. Watch the ball bounce up in the air. Watch Mitchell. The ball's going to bounce off here. Up there, now Mitchell just comes across. And the official on the backside thought it was no good. The one in the front said, yes, it was a catch. Hendricks deflected it. Great concentration by Mitchell to bring that one in. Blitz comes again. Going for everything. And incomplete. Quite a battle in the corner of the end zone between Lloyd Hill and Aaron Glenn. And everybody was looking for interference there. One team saying it's defensive interference. The other one saying it's offensive interference. But neither one of them really does anything to the other one to keep him from the football. That's inside position. There's a push back. That was almost a catch. I thought they both interfered. <laughs> yeah. Kind of looks like the official said that. Brought to a draw. Second and ten. Draw play Morris. Inside the 20, still going, 15-yard line, bring up third and a long two. Atkinson brought him down. When you look at that clock ticking down, now it's going to be under six minutes. When this drive started, it was near the 10-minute mark. Keep in mind, if they take the lead, how little A&M has accomplished through the air today. 
less time they have, the more they would have to rely on the unsteady passing game. Morris again. So Larry drives him back. The mark will be everything. I think he's a little short. So Larry first, Ben Bates, and then help. They'll mark him at the 13. He needs just outside the 12. Don't be awfully close. If he had been able to fall forward, he would have picked it up. But AM got a lot of people there, didn't allow him to fall forward. They may have, in fact, held him for that for, for the fourth down. Dykes down two. Now you don't with think 5:32 to go. Now you don't think Spike Dykes is going to go for this on fourth down, do you? I don't know no. anymore with him. <laughs> but no, you wouldn't think so. Well, they're saying what six eight inches. I hear him yelling field goal. We can hear in the sideline microphones he yelled field goal or field goal. Now if this were last year and they had Lynn Elliott it's automatic. John Davis is four for six with a long kick of 40 this year so he has been steady. And uh, what he would look at here would be about a 30 yard effort and that's exactly what they'll go for the 30 yard field goal for the lead with the angle to the right. Well, it's the best angle for a right-footed kicker. That's to the right. It's almost like it's a little slice. Out of Mike Honeycutt's hole. And he is good. The crowd goes quiet, but there's a red section over there. I believe they brought 5,000 fans from Tech from Lubbock for this game. And they all cheered. Did Dykes know it? Had it all the way. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. I planted this tree the day your father was born. He'd be 38 this year. It was tough on all of us, but your father worked hard to make sure you'd be okay. And so did a lot of other people. The people we never met, never will meet, worked hard to help us. How? Well, social security for one. With everybody helping, we all get something. And when you're grown, you'll be able to return the favor. You know what this is? That's my tree. That's right. Hey, man, that's all right. From survivor benefits to retirement, there's safety in our numbers. To learn more, write Social Security, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. ACC and SEC wars on the tough turf. Charlie Ward leads top five FSU against North Carolina. Or Arkansas and top ten Tennessee in the SEC. Live Saturday on HAC. There's a man who has given Texas Tech the possible upset margin of one point. John Davis from Brandon, Mississippi. And there is the man who's missed extra point, left that possibility open. I can promise you he's saying to himself, offense, get me in position. I want to redeem myself. The Aggies with five minutes and 19 seconds trail by one. And if you're wondering, Jeff Granger has 71 passing yards today. But that could be enough to get it done on the ground. Mitchell and Mickens back even into the wind. Great leg strength by Davis as uh, Mickens will settle for the touchback. They've got 80 yards to go and 519 remaining. And again, Dave, the situation for AM, don't panic, stay calm back there. A lot of time, five minutes and 19 seconds. 
That's a long time in a football game. Even if he doesn't throw a pass. That's exactly. They can run the length of the field. So they need to stay with the game plan. Do what's doing. Do what's worked well for them. And whether he's had a good day or a bad day, his confidence never seems to waver, does it? No, it certainly doesn't. Greg Hill is back in. You saw him limp off on their last series. Takes the give. Picks up about six or seven. Gains an armor on the tackle. That 12 play drive ending with Davis's field goal eating up 451. They took over with about 10 minutes to go. We're under five minutes now. If you're tech, you want them to get up slow, just let them fall down. Just hold them. Let them make them work. Make them work three downs for a first down. Harrison right, Mitchell left on second and four. And Granger off play action looking to waggle. He will keep it for the first down to the 44. Eighteen yards for Granger. That's an in, this is an instant replay of the Stanford game, which led to a winning field goal when Granger faked and came back out to his left, looked downfield, put the ball away, and picked up big yardage. You see him put that other arm over the ball, kind of just kind of protecting it. Don't fumble now. Hill and Thomas in the eye. And it's Rodney Thomas. His career day continues with a gain to the 49-yard line. That gets him near the 160-yard mark. Greg Hill has 138 yards. Well, that's shades of the uh, Pony Express back in the Dickerson-James tandem. Not many Southwest Conference teams or anybody else in college football looking at that kind of production from guys who, for the most part, play the same position. Carter replaces Thomas and blocks for Hill on the sweep. He dives into Red Raider territory and they'll give him the 49 yard line. The clock rolls at 338 to play. John Pitts on the tackle. That's what you want to do if you tech. Make them use all three downs. An injured player on the field looks like maybe Hill down. Hill it is. And when he limped off before it was uh, it looked like a slight knee problem. And we won't guess here, but it does stop the clock with 333. Well, the first question people are going to start asking is, how good is Venetulius out? How far has he hit this year? What's his, what's his real accuracy range? 44 yards. That's, and that's a good kick. That's from about the 27-yard line. And uh, keep in mind, if it comes down to that, he does have the strong breeze at his back. Well, that's a big factor. That, that wind is blowing straight from our left to right. The, the, it's right at the back. It's not even a crosswind. It's right straight at the back of the Aggies. Well, Hill started to make his way to a sitting position and now has sagged back into a prone position, and they've called for a stretcher for Greg Hill. And if, if you have ever heard 70,000 people go absolutely silent, that's what we've got right now with a timeout at Kyle Field. Torre. After Prime. Group outings are just one way to get out and enjoy the game of golf. If you're thinking about organizing a tournament, see your PGA professional. He's ready to help. Your hands may be trying to tell you something, or your legs. If it's not what you want to hear, do something about it. The Muscular Dystrophy Association can help. If you suspect you have one of the 40 diseases covered by MDA, check it out. Call 1-800-572-1717. More terrific primetime sports action from the Southwest and around the country. Tuesday on HSE.
Moments ago, the standing ovation as Greg Hill was brought to the sideline on that stretcher. We, uh, as we said, won't guess what the problem is, but we do know that he limped off uh, on the previous series, and it may be a recurrence. You see his numbers for the day, 141 yards on 32 carries and a touchdown. And Rodney Thomas, of course, replaces him on third and three. Rodney Thomas close with that second effort. If they give him the spot, I think he's got it. But if they don't give him the second effort and call him down, I don't think he does. Good discipline that time by Texas Tech not to be drawn offside. You can see Granger came out with a long snap count. A long snap count trying to draw him offside. He didn't. Thomas may have made it with this second effort. Right there, he's hit, but all of a sudden he launches. So he just kind of leans himself back. He wasn't all the way down. Short, though, Dave. He didn't get it. Quincy White held him back, and they go for it on fourth and one. And Carter, first down. Two thirty-two to play, and still all three timeouts in the Aggies' back pockets as Carter on the dive on fourth down keeps this drive moving. Again, Venatulius's range has been 44 yards in his Aggie career. So they're not real close to it yet. Open was Carter, and Granger led him too much. No, but Dave, with the wind at their back, there he can kick probably eight to ten yards farther. So you're looking at if he gets to the 35-yard line, they've got a shot at it. They bogged down and unable to get it. He can still kick from about the 35-yard line in. So they're looking at nine more yards. Yeah. You think? Yeah, I think that they've got they've got two minutes and 13 seconds. Obviously, they want to get as close as they can, but they're getting close to his range. They do need to pick up about. Probably about eight to ten more yards. Deja vu in Miami, Florida State missed another field goal at the end, and they lose by three. All day, Granger. Short reception to the 43-yard line. Carter hit by White. And the clock will stop on a timeout at 2.02 remaining as the Aggies use their first timeout. Boy, another strong afternoon for Quincy White. Senior out of Midland League where Spike Dykes used to be the coach. This one comes down to the nub when we return. In tennis, you don't just play the opponent. You've got to play the ball. It's how you play the ball that determines whether your shot is in or out, whether the point is won or lost. Now, you can play the ball and win with this half-hour video by tennis man editor Vic Braden. Free with a one-year subscription. 12 issues of Tennis Magazine. Call 800-522-5333 for a full year of Tennis Magazine, plus this free video, just $13.77. Call 800-522-5333 now. Fall sports go full speed ahead this October on HSE. Tune in for Tough Turf Saturdays and catch perennial college powers from coast to coast, along with some high-impact collisions in the SWC and the Southland Conference. We'll also set them up and knock them down with SWC Women's Volleyball and shift gears with Fast Track Thursday. Fall sports are full speed ahead this October on HSE. And Dave Rowe at Kyle Field with that much time remaining. And the Aggies talking over a third and eight. The number five Aggies, the undefeated national championship hopeful Aggies, who may see those dreams melt before their eyes if they can't pull this one up. Their last home loss, 1989 by one. Their last loss, regular season, at Tulsa last September by one. And Granger avoids the sack somehow. Five short, first down, 28-yard line. Talk about a play. Watch Granger. He is going down, right? Wrong. 
He's not going down. This would have ended the play. Unbelievable. Granger somehow stays on his feet. And this time off the back of John Pitts and a flag down. They may get Pitts for interfering with Rodney Thomas. Mike Lissio was thundering in and they'll wave it off. No flag. That's 61. Let's get some credit. That's Dusty Beaver. Previous play he had the sack he thought. This time Lissio almost had the sack. But an incompletion second and 10 with 141 to go. Stanford coming from behind at Notre Dame in the third and it's all over in Madison. That's the biggest surprise in years in the Big Ten. This could be the biggest surprise in a long time. The SWC. Rodney Thomas. To the 20. Third and one. They say that Rodney Thomas is the biggest Greg Hill fan on this team. He's his backup. Those aren't backup numbers today. And he is having to pick up for his injured teammate. First man through, Gross. Still going first and goal. Cliff Gross. This is just determination. Gross got hit on the line and just kept his feet going. He just drove through there. The clock is down to a minute and six seconds. It's going to be first down. They're in great position for at least the field goal, but I don't think that R.C. Slocum just wants the field goal. Royal Jackson in conversation with Jeff Granger, where they spot the ball. Oh, it's illegal substitution by the defense, which is declined. First down. It is first and goal because it's just inside the 10 yard line. They took over after about a six minute drive by Texas Tech. One minute mark of this one. Rodney Thomas is inside the five. Now this is just like an extra point. And we know what happened on the last extra point for AM. Second timeout call by Slocum. We take it with 50 seconds remaining and Kyle Field up for grab. So is this game. The fascination always existed. The human body, without doubt, is the greatest of inventions. Flawless in design, capable of astonishing feats. Amazingly, the harder the body is worked, the stronger, more beautiful it becomes. To unlock your body's potential, we proudly offer Soloflex. 32 old-fashioned iron pumping exercises, each correct in form and balance. All on a machine that fits in the corner of your home. Soloflex, simple and efficient like the body itself, which may explain why it looks less like a machine and more like a work part. For a free brochure, call anytime. Today's game has been brought to you by GMC Truck, the strength of experience. the one play that really set this entire drive up. It was the play when Granger almost sacked by Dusty Beavers on the backside. Most quarterbacks would go down. Granger stayed up, found his tight end for the first down. Kept the drive alive on third down. And the drive sets up second and goal from the four yard line here with 50 seconds remaining and one more Aggie timeout. 
They go from the I formation with Gross and Thomas behind Granger. Ranger on the roll, almost intercepted by Marcus Coleman. He was too close oh. to Granger. Oh. Coleman will look at this picture for the rest of his.